Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Watch Out for Fireballs that we recorded in 2020-2020, the new year, election year here in the United States. Big year for the network. We have cool stuff coming up. Uh, we say in the episode, thanks everybody for donating to Duckstream. I hope everyone uh, had great holidays, whether you celebrate or not, you know, that time period. I hope it was awesome. Even if that time is difficult for you, many years in which it has been extremely difficult for me. Um, I was lucky enough that this year was not, but uh, I understand sometimes it is, and I hope that you did your best. Uh, we appreciate you, and um, yeah, stay tuned for this episode about a, a banger-ass game, Dusk. Let's do it. 2020. <laughs> My name is Cole Ross. And you're listening to Watch Out for Fireballs. It is a Games Club podcast. And this week we are talking about Dusk, which is a first-person shooter developed by David Szymanski and published by New Blood Interactive for the PC and Switch in 2018. Dusk. Dusk. It's a good is game. Is this on Switch yet? Um, I don't I think know. it is not. I, yeah, it was going to be published for Switch, but I don't uh, think it's actually out for them yet. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Wikipedia proved me, or uh, it, it did me wrong. Wikipedia, Wikipedia Mo- said it worse. And Moby Games did me wrong. Which are yeah, usually Moby Games that. said it even worse. Oh, um, well. It's going to come out yes. uh, for Switch is the idea. I don't think it's quite there yet because people keep asking me. Ah. Okay. Um, but maybe they're wrong. Um, do, do you trust Moby? <laughs> or do as, you trust as you of know, r- at Bonerfart69 <laughs> on Twitter? As of right now, it is not on the, the, the Nintendo eShop. So... Ah. Take oh, that, well. Moby. I'm going to take you down to this. this I don't, I don't think the website, the whale website has anything to do with the, with, with the electronic music man. Well, they spell and pronounce their name the same call. Okay. Don't, yeah, don't, don't yeah. be naive. I'm pretty sure that's mostly just games that Moby likes. Me. On there. <laughs> Every single one of them. <laughs> yeah. 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 He just, it's where he catalogs his collection. Yeah. Yeah. Where else? I mean, if you log on to Gary games, you get mine. If you log on to Cole games, you get yours. Yeah, you know? It's weird. It's weird that the government hands those out. Super weird. Um, what's not weird? Dusk. No. Yeah. Segway. It's kind of weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Um, before we get into it, mm-hmm. big thanks to everybody who donated to Duckstream. Yeah, this is the first uh, the first time we're recording uh, this show after uh, after that event. Uh, it was a gigantic success. Uh, mm-hmm. Hugely generous people helped us uh, break our record. Um, yes. You know, just uh, it's N- nearly double it. Yeah. Yeah, like so, so not just break it, but like soundly break it. Yes, break it like Bane <laughs> broke box office records. Yeah, so and yeah, it, it was um, a, it was a, it was just a, it was a real fun event, and watching that number get bigger and bigger and bigger was, uh, you know, greatly heartwarming. So yes, it is a privilege to be able to do this, um, and we really appreciate everyone who enables us to do it, both in terms of like giving us the platform to do this, but then also in terms of direct generosity. And everyone who was not able to donate to your disabled signal boost mm-hmm. and watch and tune in and make jokes and play Jackbox and everything are also greatly appreciated. Yeah. It was a coalition victory. It all helps. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this is the first uh, episode we're recording in 2020 because mm-hmm. last week was our live episode. Um, and this is, you know, it's like pushing for this, kicking off the new year mm-hmm. with a game what slaps mm-hmm. uh, Dusk. Yeah. It slaps. <laughs> it's, 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 it's great. Yeah. I like it, it quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Dusk is a game where you play as Dusk Dude. He is this treasure hunter who is captured by a cult. 
that has taken mm-hmm. over the town of Dusk, Pennsylvania. Uh, the size of the town is unclear. There's no way to be sure. Uh, what is the town is unclear as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, Dust dude doesn't like being put up on meat hooks, so he's got to kill everyone for revenge. Yep. And as as you go on, you get kind of drawn into this power. Yes. Uh, kind of thing. Temp- there's a little bit of attempted by evil mm-hmm. storyline. Uh, it may or may not surprise you to learn that the story is not first and foremost. No. For most no. of Dusk. Uh, <laughs> because Dusk is a throwback uh, to 90s first person shooters, um, specifically Quake and Blood and Doom, but there are actually influences from all over. Yeah. Uh, and this, which we'll talk about. And mm-hmm. uh, my thesis statement for this that I'm going, going to make, and I'll see if you agree with this, mm-hmm. um, is Dusk is to Doom as Shovel Knight is to Capcom platformers. Yeah, I saw your tweet thread about that, and I agree with that. Like, this is, you know, it, like, it, it evokes the feeling, uh, mm-hmm. but in reality, it is taking decades of refinement, um, taking decades of in- inspiration to polish and improve and kind of give you the platonic ideal version of engaging with that kind of game. Yes, yeah. it, it throws out a lot of things that are taken for granted in that subgenre mm-hmm. um, that uh, people have a nostalgia for, but are actually kind of relics of older game design. Yeah. You know, so like the maze like levels mm-hmm. of uh, things in key card based progress made a lot of sense for Doom because they were kind of limited in their ability at the time to simulate a space. Uh, limited both in terms of like technological ability, but also in terms of like uh, imagine you know the, the the idea just had not occurred mm-hmm. yet. You know, eventually that would become a big part of this genre with blood and with Duke Nukem 3D. Mm-hmm. But early on, like you're kind of in an abstract space. Like the idea is this suggests something, yeah, without really being it. Mm-hmm. And because it was abstract, like mazes made sense. But yeah. they're kind of a bummer. Mm-hmm. Like we did the Doom 2 episode, a game I dearly love. Mm-hmm. I find Doom like really playable today. Um, set me down with some doom. I'm very happy. Yeah. But there are like kind of shitty maze levels. There's kind of, kind of annoying key card quests, mm-hmm. part of it, things like that. They're a part of that genre. This game just kind of doesn't do it. Yeah. Like what if we took some, some, uh, cues from the level design of thief mm-hmm. and deus ex and, yeah. and it makes key cards good. Yeah. <laughs> like key cards are great in this. It like makes total sense. It doesn't feel like backtracking nonsense. I mm-hmm. never, there's a couple of mazes, but they're actually, more the idea of a maze than the experience of a maze. Yes. You know, they give you the suggestion of it, but it's, you know, it's not a maze like experience. They do a lot of things like that. Mm-hmm. A lot of little minor changes to make this be what all of those games like feel like they should have been. Yeah. Um, it's pretty wild. Mm-hmm. Like I have spent a lot of uh, the runtime of watch out for fireballs thinking like, man, we got to do Duke Nukem 3D someday. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of think, well, you know, this kind of did it. <laughs> yep. You know, like the early levels of Duke Nukem 3D are among my favorite like video game levels. Mm-hmm. The first few levels of that. But then you get to episodes two and three and it's all shit. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's like a space station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this is that without the space stations. Mm-hmm. Half-Life without Zen. You know, Duke Nukem 3D without space stations. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Well, while, while, still, while, while still having like, you know, pretty significant scenery changes, like each episode feels very different from the other. But like there is not there is not a um, consequent drop in quality or, you know, a change in focus that is just a bummer that makes you feel like, oh, this is what I signed up for. No, it's yes. all it's all pretty much what you signed up for. It's um, it's all pretty good. And that moves at such a clip. Yeah. Like these level, you know, the levels, I mean, we have a lot of different, this is kind of going all over, but we'll get to, to everything. That's the important mm-hmm. part. Um, the levels take me, this is my second time through them. <clears throat> and so I could see as I played my current time and my best time. Yep. And my best time when I didn't know the levels at all was generally around 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And my current time knowing the levels a little better was around, generally around like 13 minutes for the, mm-hmm. the later levels are a little longer. Yeah. That's a great bit of gameplay. Mm-hmm. 13 minutes is like yeah. a really good amount of time to be in a level mm-hmm. and be dealing with a certain scenery and setting and kind of gameplay conceit and enemy set. Um, that's great. Yeah. That's a perfect amount of time. Yeah. You know, um, re- I mean, I guess it's just a complicated way of saying good pay- well pace. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. But so near perfectly, placed. you know, so like, you know, so somebody who is just kind of scrolling, right. scrolling through steam or looking through a list of games, you know, this is not a game that I really, heard a lot about last year you know i I wasn't really plugged into this space you know like i know this publisher did like the the rise of the triad 
update and people seem to really enjoy that, but it just wasn't something I was paying attention to. You know, like if you're just looking at this without, w without that piece of information, you could be forgiven for thinking like, Oh, like, you know, everything about this is going to be such a throwback that it's going to be, you know, it's going to bring forward all of that shit that is going to make it a real bummer to play. No, no, this is the, the this is light and good and fast and fun. Yes. Yep. It is. Yeah. It, it's it, it good. Yeah. It, it good. real good. It good. Yeah. It real good. It real good. Uh, and yeah. you know, it makes the state. It makes a statement like right from the beginning. Like when you boot up the game, it does a fake DOS scroll that is mm -hmm. really you know dense with jokes. It's it's great. Yeah. yeah. The uh, one of the, one of the things I think about with it too that when we talk about it bringing old mechanics forward that maybe should be left behind, right? Mm -hmm. So like one of the things that uh, is you need to have your your save game uh kind of uh discipline yes this is you're a gonna hard want game. A quick save yeah. it's a hard game you're gonna want a quick save mm -hmm. um it's easy to quick save mm -hmm. it makes a little like a very satisfying like sometimes when you quick save in one of these games you don't know that you have mm -hmm. this makes a very satisfying like the soundtrack speeding back up yeah well it's it, like it slows down the game while it does yeah. it and then speeds back for a up. second and then goes back up really cool mm -hmm. and i started thinking of like needing to you know manage my save state discipline almost as just like another mechanic yeah in the game like as opposed to being like a an archaic thing that i w didn't want to engage with that we've fixed with checkpoints mm -hmm. it's really interesting we're recording this right after uh, we recorded the most recent episode of blasphemous for bonfires i chat uh, which will come out a sunday uh, sunday night from now for early release people mm -hmm. and uh you know we talked about checkpointing in that and kind of the idea of just having to do something over again mm -hmm. um being kind of an archaic game mode and i was like this solves that yeah. for me. Like if it's been a little while since I've saved, I kind of reflexively quick save. Mm -hmm. And if I know something is hard, I'm only going to have to do like a run up to it once mm -hmm. because next time I will save right before it. Yeah. You know, and that was like a, a real fun and very refreshing, mm -hmm. like a bit of old school design that is not necessarily outdated <laughs> or outmoded. You know, but ended up being something that now, because of the changing trends, I'm really grateful for. Yeah. Like, I, I just, you know, I, I found myself for, like, the first episode of the game as it's getting you, uh, like, on board, not really quick saving because it's just not a thing that I've done in games yeah. for a while, <laughs> you know? Uh, like, remembering that that muscle exists was a bit of a process for me. Yeah. yeah. And it's different in an action game. Yeah. Like the way it fits into an action game flow is very different than how it fits in a role playing. You know, if I'm playing Torment, I'm going to quick save before a conversation. Yeah. Here you start kind of getting like, this is going to sound wanky. It started feeling like my body, specifically my arms and my hands were mm -hmm. like li reading the language of the game. Yeah. To where I would see a layout of certain buildings mm -hmm. and just like my body would just quick save without me thinking about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay, this is, I know what this is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it was very obvious. It was like, oh, it's an empty room with a switch in the middle. Of course, you know, a wall is going to open up. Yeah. And enemies going to attack or something. But sometimes it was just like geometry. Mm -hmm. And I started just being able to read with, again, it felt like a body response. Yeah. Like read the game. It was like an un like, unvoiced anticipation that is yes. built, that is built into the, into the pace of this. And that kind of like, unconscious uh like brain hand connection mm -hmm. is a really you know one of those special things that video games can do that other media can't do yeah you know that feeling was fired very hard in this game for me yeah um and performing well in this is you know like it it feels very good you know like just just the, the this genre of of shooters you know it's called twitch you know twitch shooters and uh, yes there's a certain amount that just happens it feels like it skips your decision making process yeah um but like i don't think that it is brainless you know we talked about oh. this with with with, with doom too there's a tremendous amount of you know strategy and moment to moment decision making that you're doing um but yeah like it just it like i don't know it, it does feel like it lives in your hands more, yeah. more, more so than a bunch of other stuff. But like, if you break down what is happening, there's an awful lot of like really subtle stuff that is going on with the speed of projectiles, with your specific move speed in relation to what's happening around you. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, it's all stuff that you have to factor in. Yes. Yep. Uh, and it, 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 you can switch between those two modes. Yeah. Like the the thing that the level design accomplishes in this is that it vacillates between Twitch based kind of circle strafing. Um, individual encounters, which are all about 
like my arms are playing the game while I'm watching. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then there are times where I'm creeping forward, sniping Mm -hmm. or creeping forward, shooting guys out of the, you know, around corners, taking out turrets and stuff. And you go between both those modes. Like when you you read interviews with this guy um, and he talks about like, yeah, you know, of course, Quake was an influence, but so was Thief. Yeah. You know, so it was Deus Ex. Like, that's what I'm seeing in that. Mm-hmm. And the feeling of switching back and forth between those modes and having most situations handleable both ways. Mm-hmm. Like, there were definitely times where I was like, uh, I would see an encounter, and the way I would know that the game wished that I had just run in, mm-hmm. you know, I, I dismantled it carefully like a Dark Souls level. Yeah. And then uh, I get to the middle of an arena and music starts coming up, but there's only one enemy still left alive. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> and there's just like one guy floating towards me, and I kill him, and then like, <laughs> You know, that's it. I was like, oh, okay. They wanted me to run in and grab this power up and just be mm-hmm. knee deep in blood. Yeah. But other times I would run past something that was definitely a crafted encounter with lots of ambushes, um, you know, and it like, kind of got you moments, enemies attacking you from your Z axis. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this should have been something I did carefully and quietly, but I actually just like rushed through it. Yeah. And did, you know, fought everything really quickly and it also worked. It's not very, it's very actually more expressive than it seems. Yeah. Uh, on the, on the surface. Mm hmm. So extremely good. Um, the moment to moment decision making, you know, that's what we're talking about in yeah. that. Like it's either something you do in your hands or something you do in your head, but you can mm-hmm. do both. Yeah. Um, and the two things you're doing this uh, in service of are surviving because uh, the game is tough. Yes. Uh, it's a hard game. Uh, the other thing you are doing is uh, exploring and finding stuff. Right. Because it is a joy and very useful to poke at the crevices of all these levels. Yeah. You know, like the games that inspired this, this is a game that is riddled with secrets, but the secrets are hidden in much more interesting ways than just like, oh, you Roomba at this particular wall. wall." Right. Yeah. It's Um, not like uh, Wolfenstein 3D, which is like the worst of the secrets. Yes. Here it is, you know, some of the, some of the best of the secrets, which, you know, it just rewards you for, for being Mm -hmm. a very curious, a very curious explorer in this yeah, world and for, having, like, uh, for yeah, understanding sure. the the way that the level is pointing you, but also mm-hmm. like the subtle ways that it's like, okay, they're, they're pointing me in like really heavily in that direction, but there's a couple of different places off the back of here and it always puts something there. Yep. Yeah. And they, that plays into that, like reading the level. Yeah. You know, like that feeling. And that's something that like not every video game accomplishes. No, no. You know, it's, it's an interesting thing. Like I think about the Dishonored games, which I absolutely love. You know, I, I love those games. I love exploring them. I love poking into them. Mm-hmm. I don't always have like an intuitive, just kind of sixth sense where hidden shit is going to be mm-hmm. in those games. Like I have a little bit of an idea, but not as strong as I do in this Yeah. or in like Deus Ex, like Deus Ex one. I have a very strong sense of like, oh, this is how I'm going to get into this building. Do you think that's you know, just about gonna... the fidelity of the spaces or I think it has a lot to do with the fidelity and readability of the spaces yeah. um, where in uh, Dishonored, everything is hyper realistic in a way that kind of is you get kind of detail pollution yeah, yeah you know and it's it's not realistic architecture mm-hmm. to, to my lived in experience the simplified architecture of this and mapping on to archetypical buildings like yeah. i don't know what a like you know a a london 1900 bank necessarily is laid out <laughs> like but i can imagine what a farmhouse is laid out like and like yeah. oh there's gonna be a loft yeah oh you know from that loft there might be a ledge that I can get up mm-hmm. onto the roof. Oh shit! I've, here's a secret. I have I have been in sheds and barns. Oh, have I been in sheds and barns? <laughs> I have been in sheds and oh, barns. Oh, the sheds and barns you see, my boy. Yeah. What if Barnes and Nobles was spelled the other way? Uh, I mean, I'd probably be more likely to go there. Yeah. And barns. Yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. I just something weird that happens in this. Like occasionally, this will happen to me, but it's a real rarity. But like, I would find myself like almost kind of behind the scenery. And when you get back there, there's like a little texture that says, "Hey, you're not supposed to be here." Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, Some of those are extremely uh, obscure to get to as well. Yeah, but like, like I just naturally a- got to it, but I didn't feel like I got stuck. It was like, oh, I just I, I went a little overboard looking for secrets, exploring. And it's just it's fun. It's like a cute little. Yeah. cute little move and some of those are extremely um useful yep like we'll, we'll talk about this i mean we're kind of just spraying everything out like a super shotgun yeah. at the beginning of this episode but the way that they handle secrets in this game is my favorite uh mm-hmm. way that you can handle those things which one uh they give you additional levels mm-hmm. so that you know that we talked about that the best reward is that is more game right if the, you know the game is good super mario world as opposed to super mario brothers 3 mm-hmm. um the uh that's great. The other thing that they can do is they let you jump the curve in ways that 
are just, it feels like you're breaking modern rules. Yes. Like, you know, we play, one of the things that will get annoying to me about modern games is how controlled of an experience they are. Yeah. I've talked about that a lot where it's like, you just have such a fucking tight rudder on how much power I have and what I'm facing mm -hmm. all the time. And this game, if you are good and find secrets, you get the super shotgun as your second weapon. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, like, or you get the, you get, you get the, the riveter um, or you, you, like, you, you just straight, you find the sword. Like what? Yes. <laughs> you know, and you find the sword in the second level just through doing good secret yeah. hunting and jumping that curve. It creates that difficulty arc that we talk about a lot, which is stairs. Mm -hmm. Like I'm ahead of the curve for a while. That feels really good. No. The curve will catch up to me. Games, you don't have to be scared of me being ahead of the curve for a little no, bit. You don't no. have to be Diablo 3 with mm -hmm. this shit. Like, you don't have to just constantly have me mashed at an appropriate level yeah. to create, like, a clicker-like flow state. Mm -hmm. Let me feel a little empowered and then yeah. make me feel a new challenge, then a little empowered, then a new challenge. That rhythm mm -hmm. just feels so good. Yeah. Like, you know, you know the, 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 there there is a tension in, you know, my my power as a player or a character being behind the challenge that is set for me, mm -hmm. you know, just you know, b b picture me below, uh, on the graph below the point on the curve where it should be. The tension of, you know, like it is demanding more of me. I must get better. I must, you know, I must get there. I think that on the other side of that, like there is a joy in being above that, having that rela that relaxation, I think you have to have you have to have both of those. Yes, <laughs> you know, like Very it is much. it is fine to have those disparities. I think that's where a lot of really interesting play happens. Yeah, you know, and you and you can do, uh, hey, you're behind the eight ball mm -hmm. for the for the game. Yeah, that's cool. That like, happens. You know, like I, if you're following along naturally here, that's going to happen to you. Yeah, and and that's cool. That's fun and interesting. The least. To me, the least interesting thing is just having you constantly perfectly balanced. Yeah. With the exceptions of like Resident Evil 4 or a game that actually adjusts itself yeah. to meet you. Like a game that just kind of like, hey, I got to a new world. I got a sword plus one and every enemy has commensurate equal <laughs> extra health. Um, like that I, just sucks ass. Yeah. It's so I, I got I got a 1.3% uh, boost to my damage and everything else got a 1.3% boost to their HP. Yes. Um, you know, I guess what I'm saying is Elder Scrolls Oblivion, fuck you for the damage it, you have done. Yes. It, that idea that everything must be balanced that way. And that yeah. is why, you know, someday we'll do Oblivion mm -hmm. and that will be a really interesting episode because – We'll have to be like, do we do the regular version of this that's horrible, or do mm -hmm. we mod this until it's a good game? <laughs> you know? A good game that nobody who played Oblivion has played. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you can you can fix like nobody people have played the good version of it. I know, I know, but I just I'm, yeah. I'm thinking more like back at the time it came out. When, yeah, yeah. You know, it was the lead skew on that was a 360. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the 360 version is not the definitive version of Obliv Oblivion. Right. Um, so this game, uh, weapons are very important. Yes. It's an FPS. Uh, you start with just a pair of sickles. Um, you gather more weapons as you go. As we mentioned, you can jump the curve mm -hmm. here. Um, each level has a bunch of weapons. And when you pick up a copy of the weapon, you get ammo for it. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a mode called infiltration mode where you always start with sickles. Yep. Um, otherwise, you don't reset. So you get to keep your inventory all the way through the episode. Episodes are 10 stages in mm -hmm. classic FPS form. Yes. Um, the weapons, you know, mostly are about what you would expect. You know, some of the mm -hmm. theming is a little bit different, like they replaced the railgun with a hunting rifle. Uh, Gary, I love that hunting rifle so much. It's great. It's the most powerful weapon in the game. Yep. It was my, it was my persistent boss killer. Like you expect it to be the bot rocket launcher, but mm -hmm. no, it was not. Yeah. I like, like um, the riveter is good. Um, I, yeah. I like the river a lot, especially when you get the power up that, uh, that increases your, um, shooting speed. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the, the, the hunting rifle all the way. Hunting rifle is really good. Um, you get a crossbow that goes through walls. Yep. Uh, and a kind of mortar launcher. And those are kind of the weird weapons. Yeah. Everything else is fairly standard. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one of the things that I think uh, is, again, I'm just going to point this out because it's one of my favorite little touches. Mm -hmm. So older FPSs didn't have reloading. Right. Um, that was, Doom, that was something points. that was brought in with like um, Medal of Honor when it was trying yeah. to be a little bit more semi to, you know, the World War Two kind yes. of weapons and stuff. Um, and one of the things I've seen said about this game before is people are like, oh, it's very irreverent. There's a button that makes you just flip your, flip your weapons around. Mm -hmm. But it's really important that that button is R. <laughs> yep. It's the reload button that does that. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like a fun Easter egg. It's, it's really clearly and playfully and cleverly communicating to you like, mm -hmm. hey, this isn't that kind of thing. Like tapping reload after every volley of weapons mm -hmm. is just you 
just linear weapon. Yeah, it just does a little. It does a little flourish. Yeah, yeah, which it, is fun. It would feel weird if you do. pressed R and there was nothing there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, and it's it's cute. It doesn't mm-hmm. actually affect you. Like it doesn't. You know, you can interrupt if you hit shoot while the animation's happening. You'll mm-hmm. interrupt the animation. Yep. Uh, some of them. You know? ha- some of them turn into like minor little melee attacks you can do. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah like it's yeah. never enough, but like some of them will do damage with somebody's right there. Uh, oh. you know, like some certain taunts uh, that happen in TF2. Yeah. No, I've never, I've never done that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, it's just very, it's very clever, and it the way it's signaled, I think, is just like a really nice, like, oh, this is the kind of game. Yeah. I'm playing here. Mm-hmm. No, uh, but I mean, just mean the kind of the, the the key point there. There's no reloading here. You yeah. you know you have the well of bullets that you that that, that you that you have, um, and you shoot until they're gone. Of course, you know the pace of play is determined by the rate of fire. So you know shotguns, you have to you know reload them. You have to put new shells in in between. Um, you know yeah. the super shotgun. You know there there's a long cooldown in between those because you have to you know you have to you have to rack it. <laughs> you have to yeah. rack it, break it, put in the new shells, and then put it back. Uh, but you know the it, it, the pace of this is not volley reload, volley reload. It is like eg- exhaust this weapon and then move to the next thing. Yeah, yeah. Or just you know choose the weapon that's correct and use that because it's correct. And don't yeah. worry, it doesn't mean that the play is unrelenting. Like you never take cover. Mm-hmm. Or anything like that, but it doesn't have that kind of stop and pop rhythm yeah. where you're forced to take cover. Yeah. Additionally, yeah, questioning these assumptions that we have here right now, um, you when you pick up a weapon, um, unless you you know um, you know uh, lose it for some reason uh, because of the play, like you always have it. Like this is a game where you press you press five and it pulls up that particular weapon. You are not dealing with a limited um, armory. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, no, none of that two two weapon shit. No, that Halo or Bioshock Infinite. Yeah. yeah, which is garbage. <laughs> um, the uh, So you can dual wield a couple different weapons. You can dual wield your pistols and your shotguns if you pick up a second one. Um, I did not notice my accuracy being lessened by this. I just went through ammo quicker. It's it's a big thing with the shotgun. Um, the single I, shotgun is much more accurate. Yeah, I just I didn't did not have that experience. Yep. I always did a double shotgun because you can't go back. Right. Right. So like once you have the double, but I, I always had the uh, double shotguns and did not experience a loss of accuracy. Mm-hmm. It's, um, it's not a huge problem, but it's but, but it's definitely there. You want to have that happen because when you have the dual shotgun, it gets rid of the shot delay. Yeah, you have double rate of fire. Like it's yeah. not as quick as you tap, but it makes it much quicker. Yeah. The um the other thing about regular shotguns in this is the uh the way they differentiate the shotgun and the super shotgun to this is <clears> basically uh the shotgun just fires like big shells almost. Mm-hmm. There's a spread, but it's very minor. Yep. The super shotgun is more like a traditional shotgun. Yes. Um, where uh, you have to get up close. The regular shotgun is good at medium distance. Mm-hmm. It's not a uh, just only close range weapon. Right. And thus. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. One of the only like real modern additions to this, you know, just explicitly like in the engine, the you know, the things you can do. There are all kinds of modern touches put throughout this. But the kind of the basic one here is that there are physics objects. In this, Mm -hmm. you know, you can pick things up, you can stack um, things to get to places, and that leads to secret hunting being really rewarding. Um, you know, mm-hmm. like the, 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 it's so great. We'll talk about it when, when we get there, but like the, the first, the first episode secret, secret level to get there, you have to like literally pick up boxes and then get above the maze to, yeah. to, to get in there. Yeah, so good. and getting the sword, you find the basketball, and you have to send it through a teleporter. Yeah, so objects work on that too, and that's we call it a modern thing, but it's mo- it's in Half Life One, yeah. you know, it's in Deus Ex, like it's modern to Doom, but it's not modern to yeah. the ten year span that yeah. this it's, game is it's, it's, drawing it's from. It's modern to the specific reference that this is yeah. that, 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 that this is pulling from. Some of the reference, yeah. you know, like again, like there's a, there's a lot of Deus Ex in this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But but I'm just um, saying, like the way it's marketed, it says like, "Hey, this is Doom. This is blood." Yeah, no. yeah. More we're, than Doom. Where where we're objects are just you know sprites that are put in there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, you move very quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this, um, not quite as fast as Doom guy, but pretty quick. Very quick. Uh, uh, motion uh, sickness warning on this one. Crank that FOV way up. Yeah. Mm. Yep. And you can uh, you can you can adjust. There's a ridiculous amount of options. Yeah. Which we'll talk mm-hmm. about. Um, the, uh, and this is to your benefit. Like you want to be moving constantly. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things about the weapons that again, just, uh, makes this game better than a lot of its antecedents mm-hmm. or its, its predecessors, um, is that, uh, 
you should always be moving because you can dodge enemy attacks mm -hmm. because one of the most clever choices they made in this is they made hit scan a player power yes no enemy weapons hit scan mm -hmm. some of the this. projectiles move very quick like even when yep. you're fighting military people they're going to yep. be shooting bullets but um you can you can get around them if you're moving left at max speed you almost won't get hit by anything yeah if it has an explosion to it you might Mm -hmm. Um, but if you are straight circle strafing, which mm -hmm. is, you know, one of the primary verbs of this genre, you're pretty close to invincible from the enemy you can see. Yes. You're going to uh, run into the enemy that you don't see. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You have to be situationally aware. Like yeah. it doesn't make you invincible, mm -hmm. but you know, if you go back to our doom episodes or if you just play a 2.5 D shooter, mm -hmm. like hit scan enemies are kind of a bummer yeah. in those games. Like the, the corporals in doom that, you know, you open a thing and here's this guy with a chain gun. Um, like it feels just like he's going to hit you. He has a little bit of a wind up, mm -hmm. but you can dodge every attack in this game. Yeah. Like it is a game with an immense amount of defensive vocabulary for what it is. Like mm -hmm. you're not going to play through it, not getting hit. Yeah. But if you're just tanking damage, you're playing it wrong. Yeah. You move so quickly. You should be avoiding almost every, you know, trying to avoid almost every hit, mm -hmm. you know, and because you can do so through moving, it becomes a challenge, not necessarily a reflex even though there's reflex part of it but it's situational awareness mm -hmm. so it ties into that like reading the level you know knowing where ambushes might come what angles of attack might come mm -hmm. and just uh kind of searching for secrets and also while you're doing that searching for a sneaky enemy that's up on a perch above mm -hmm. you know that might snipe you yeah um the game also rewards people who might have played those older games as well like you know if there was an if there was a movement exploit uh that existed um in quake then it's here so like bunny hopping is absolutely a thing yeah uh, you know just and getting the rhythm of that down um you know is uh it, you know like it was fun to relearn that you know because mm -hmm. that was absolutely something that i did in you know team fortress and team fortress classic yeah no yeah. yep necessary necessary yeah. um so <laughs> when you read about this game online people make a big deal about the unlocked y-axis they say oh you can do flips in the air i I never noticed that conferring a mechanical advantage to me. Uh, yeah. Did, did Was that a thing for you? Or is is that like the reload button doing a little flourish? That's, I mean, just... yeah, I, did, I didn't really do do it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, very, very much. Like the the unlocked Y-axis like plays in the level design. Yeah. You know, and you, you, uh, you do, you jump mm -hmm. a lot. It adds jumping puzzles and kind of platforming to it in yeah. a way that is successful. Yeah. You know, it doesn't feel as any. But it wasn't something where like yeah. I got a lot of use out of the flips. But yeah, just the ability, like oh, I'm gonna yank, I'm gonna yank the mouse back, and that means that my character will do like a like a sonic spin in the air. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't get a lot out of that, but people people make a big deal about that online. Weirdly, yeah, need a little touch. Yeah. Um. So health and armor in this game, instead of having regenerating uh, versions of this, you find pickups. Mm -hmm. Um. Items that increase, uh, you know, that go above your maximum, not permanent upgrades, but like temporary upgrades that go above your your maximum yes health um and you don't have armor you have morale which is picked up through treasure right um here that is also used with the sword which i think is mechanically cool mm -hmm. uh we'll talk about that when you get it yes um but it plays into the sword mechanics yeah uh just the, that sword is you know there are multiple kind of mechanical changes that happen when you edge into episode three that is a, a gigantic one yeah yeah yep the sword getting that increased uh efficacy <laughs> Um, so the levels, you know, pretty much all of them have really neat gimmick and design considerations. And we're mm -hmm. going to get to those when we talk to them here. Uh, but something that initially like you, uh, I would not blame you for being wary about it. Um, is the fact that most of them, all of them are organized under doom and quakes, colored key gating system. Um, yes. but it's done good here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like and mixing that, mixing it in with like discernible architecture, um, makes a huge difference. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can just kind of know your way back. And a lot of times you don't have to know your way back. Like a lot of times it, you know, speaking of oblivion, right? Yeah. Like oblivion or Skyrim, like one of the cool things that those dungeons did, you know, is you get to the dungeon and when you get to the end of it, there's just a shortcut back to being at the dungeon. Yeah. In this game, a lot of the time when you find the blue key card, there's a little drop down or one way gate or some way to get back to where the blue door. Mm -hmm. You're almost, almost never taking the same path back. Yes. That you came through. And if you do, enemies don't respawn generally. Sometimes, you know, a door might open mm -hmm. through there. 
but you can, uh, you know, when the levels do get maze, maze like, generally you can go like if there is the path of most resistance is the correct yeah. one. Yeah. You know, if there are enemies alive, this is where I need to be going, and it mm-hmm. will lead me to the door for this key. There's one thing that happens that is, that, I, that I always associate with this, um, mm-hmm. and particularly with this kind of vintage of game, uh, which is a bit of a bummer, and I I, I don't know how they could avoid it uh, aside from just breaking, you know, breaking onto a cinematic. Sometimes you will hit a button and then just a door opens somewhere. Yeah. You don't yeah. see it. <laughs> and so you kind of have to go around and like see if something has changed. That is like the only real level design bummer that they were not able to surmount with this. And it, it's when it's part of secrets, I don't mind it. Right. Right. Like it happens in level two, you know, in order as part of the secrets and that's mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. Um, when it happens later, when the levels get more complicated as you go, yeah, it can be a mild bummer. One of the ways it's ameliorated though, is that enemies don't typically respawn right. and you move a million miles per hour. Right. So when you do backtrack, it takes a second mm-hmm. just to kind of check areas. Yeah. So. The uh, areas, the areas definitely get more complicated though, as you go on. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to kind of keep more of an internal map. Right. Uh, yeah, for them a bit of a problem for me i just see a games find your weakness obviously for yeah. me navigation ended up being a problem and like i would have to like go and look on youtube like i i just i don't know i don't know the way forward and it turns out oh it's because you hit this button and then this thing that you didn't know was a door opened up way back here that's and interesting. The place didn't go yeah yeah like yeah i, I don't know if it's, it's not something conceptualizing 3d spaces is not something i consider a strength mm. but something about this game it did was not an issue for me yeah um which is fine Yep. Um, you know, not not invalidating your experience mm-hmm. at all. Um, there is a uh, a multiplayer component of this called Dusk World. I have not played with, mm-hmm. but I think this would be very fun co op. Yep. Um, let's talk about aesthetics. Yeah, because uh, um, it really stands out. Like it's going to yep. be one of the first things that you're going to notice looking at this. Yep. Um, so low poly, low resolution textures, um, in a a way that does not feel cheap uh, to me. That feels additive. Like that is obviously the source material, right? Did this as well. Um, you get a lot to it because of the theming, specifically that the theming is horror. Yeah, um, this is a horror game. Mm-hmm. Like you know, this it kind of has everything. Like it is a scary game. Mm-hmm. Uh, weirdly enough, like and the doing low poly horror, like we've talked about that a lot. Yep, that is a tried and true combination because your brain will make will fill in the details to make things scarier. Mm-hmm. Than they would yeah. otherwise. Yes. Um, and even like just like there's really good monster designs in this. Like there are some enemies that we're going to I'm going to gush about when we get to them. Mm-hmm. When we see them here. Like, there are some that are goofy, <laughs> you know, but they feel of a piece with it. Um, yeah, low, low poly horror is amazing. And I think that they do a good job. Like the, the, the low polyness feels considered and designed. It doesn't feel like a way to get around like a design weakness, you know, like, mm-hmm. oh, like we have less budget. Uh, so we're going to go low poly here or I, we don't really know what we're doing. Everything feels really considered when it comes to this. Yeah. Yeah. High, high amount of intentionality to this game yeah. in general. Um, and the, the way that it's scary is so, good and like grungy mm-hmm. and like you know the 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 watchword for this is like texas chainsaw massacre yes you know and uh but it's like it's that but it's also lovecraftian mm-hmm. you know like lovecraftian is hell and uh, like it, it is also it, yeah. it gets so like it is always a little bit lovecraftian it gets more as it goes on yeah yeah you know it starts off as kind of folk horror mm-hmm. you know really really strongly in the cults 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 yeah. Like cult the sack. <laughs> and and then it eventually becomes very Lovecraftian and mm-hmm. weird Doctor Strange space shit. Yeah. Like you get some of that House of Leaves, like weirdness with spaces changing and everything. Mm-hmm. Like it kind of does it all, both in terms of aesthetic influences and in terms of game design yeah. influences. Like there are levels that feel like blood, levels that feel like Duke, levels that feel like Half Life, levels mm-hmm. that feel like Deus Ex. Yeah. Um, it's kind of everything. Like one of the weird things is uh, I guess episode two of this uh the big uh influences were half-life and stalker yeah and i'm like oh yeah i could definitely like mm-hmm. i didn't see stalker in this but now that you say it fuck dude mm-hmm. he initially There's wanted to set it in this. ukraine yeah. yeah yeah um so it has a lot of that uh feeling to it and this mm-hmm. comes through the music as well yep. um which is heavy guitar uh thrash music mm-hmm. i like this a little less than i like the doom uh, yeah, music just through the fidelity but it's yeah. still good yeah the the, the 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 spirit is there yeah Yep, and 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 when it's good, it's really good. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. Um, so the development of this, uh, David Szymanski, uh, you know, kind of the lead on this fell in love with 90 shooters in the mid two thousands. He was stuck with this older computer and couldn't get modern games to run, but you know, games from the nineties would run well. And Mm -hmm. the first design documents were started around that time. And then just ultimately he got the opportunity to make this, um, and put Mm -hmm. it together. Um, you know, just, uh, I believe this was a Kickstarter success. Um, I don't actually know that it was like, I, an, it I, was like an early access thing. Yeah. Yeah. Early access for sure. Yeah. Um, he ended up partnering, uh, you know, with his company to do marketing mm-hmm. and everything. There's a lot of interviews with him. He seems really cool and thoughtful. Yeah. Um, one of the, you know, he says a couple of things during this that I really like, um, you know, one of which, you know, he talks about this time where he was stuck with that old computer, mm-hmm. which I think is just, you know, that's it's sounds cool. Relatable. Like, yeah. It's relatable. And also just like. Yeah, like what is that like? Mm-hmm. You know, to just kind of immerse yourself in this. Another thing he says, like he had made other games before, and he had made primarily kind of like walking simulator, atmospheric horror games. Mm-hmm. And he talks about this game as a breakthrough of wanting to change how he was evoking experiences from player and not being scared of gameplay. Mm-hmm. Like the idea that like a lot of like indie or small developers or art developers are scared of gameplay. Yeah, like they don't know how to evoke emotions other than the language of cinema, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and this kind of got him over his fear of that. Yeah. Um, which I think is really cool. Like, I think it's very powerful. I yeah, love resonates. immersive. Yeah. Yeah. Like resident evil, you know? Yeah. I love, I oh, love, no, I just, um, no, I just said it, it, it resonates. Like, you know, that, oh, that idea. I thought, yeah. I thought you were using another example of a game that uses play, uh, for horror, but like, I love an atmospheric walking horror simulator, but I also like feeling that feeling in my arms. Mm-hmm. Like I love the physicality of, horror and adrenaline through play and not just through sitting back and watching a thing, yeah. you know, it's almost like, you know, controlling a movie's fast forward button with an analog stick. <laughs> right. You know, like it's not nothing. Like I love a walking sim, but mm-hmm. it you, you reach deeper into me yeah, by evoking things through play. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. And yeah. And to see he like he, the, the, this developer demonstrates, you know, uh, like a lot of stuff comes across like instinct, you know, because that's how I feel it when I when I when I when I play this. Like, oh, just like this, this really leans into my instinct for this particular kind of game. You realize, okay, very little that actually happens in development is instinct. Like everything, you know, is made. The stuff is there for a reason. Like, and that is not so much instinct as just a very, a very well developed understanding of what makes this kind of game work and not yeah you know yeah yeah yeah. just just, he seems to have a really a really sharp eye (laughs) for 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 for, you know what can make this work you know dude gets it yeah um his next game he's talking about making because i'll follow this guy yeah um he's talked about making uh either a straight up horror action game which like so less of an fps focus Mm -hmm. or making an immersive sim and uh the indie space mm-hmm. is desperately lacking in immersive sims yeah it's something like there's neon struct <laughs> and there there's mm, is about it yeah you know there, there's not a lot there's that one roguelike streets of rogue which mm-hmm. has some elements to it but does not feel the same at all um it just kind of doesn't happen so i would if this guy takes that kind of instinct and that kind of affection for the best period of computer games yeah. and brings them to my favorite genre of all time i will just <laughs> fucking shit and like, it's weird like those like those are two disparate directions and you can kind of see the you know the beginnings of either of those paths here like totally. it, it just yeah. it, i i It'd be hard for me to imagine like the the one game that could move into either of those directions. And yeah. both of those are here. They're both here. This game yeah. kind of has, there's a, there's a feeling of having it all mm-hmm. uh, with this, you know, in terms of being scary and action and great level design, fun to explore, you know? Yeah. Uh, and one of those things, fun to explore is a big part of immersive Sims. Yeah. So um, the first two episodes of this came out in January, 2018. The conclusion came out a few months later, mm-hmm. uh, which is the most ambitious and wild um of them i will say that if you are listening to this this isn't a very plot heavy game but it is a reveal heavy game yes um this for me and and, you know it is okay if if we're on the total of the same page this is an unqualified recommendation for me i need people who are listening to this to try it yes um and i would recommend trying it before you listen to the episode like if you if you know this just isn't your thing Mm -hmm. listen listen away but the way like i would get to a level sometimes kind of see the concept of it and just have this like just ridiculous shitting and grin on my face as I realized <laughs> what they were doing. Right. Um, I wouldn't want anyone to lose that. 
Yeah. So if you think you might get into this, like, please give it a shot. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Uh, there, there, there's a tremendous amount of the novelty um, mm-hmm. involved in this. You know, earlier when we were gushing about like, oh, 13 minutes is an amazing amount, amount of time to like spend in a space, you know, like either a play space or mm-hmm. an idea. Um, the fact that this, you know, refreshes and keeps on doing new stuff means that there's going to be like a lot of conceptual drift. There are going to be yes. things that we're going to talk about towards the end of this that are not implied by the big by where it starts, and like getting there is a really satisfying process. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so play dusk, and the, the other way that you might not want to play dusk, mm-hmm. like a lot of this stuff, we're just going to be like, this is so fucking cool. Yes. Uh, if you don't think <clears> it's cool, like if you're not in the in the cult de sac. <laughs> with, a, with, with us like if yeah. if that's not your thing if if, if like writing if ominous writing on walls in blood is not a way to get you to pay attention to stuff i yeah. you know we're not we're not speaking the same love language first of so. all god help you <laughs> and and <laughs> like if, but second of all like yeah if, if this is not the, the kind of trash you can luxuriate in yeah you know if you and then then you might not dig it mm-hmm you know, I can understand that. I can imagine the kind of person for whom this aesthetic just is not cool. Yeah. You know, like it's just I like, can see it being kind of dorky. It's fine. Yeah. Or it's <laughs> like you're really in the Nintendo pocket. Right. Like the, 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 the tender frog house, like the, the, the <laughs> extremely twee right. side of, of indie game appreciation where like everything has to be goose game. Yeah. Like, you know, everything has to be, what if someone had a friend and that's the video game? <laughs> then, maybe, then maybe you're not going to be into this. Yeah. But if you have any appreciation for genre and just kind of that feeling of like, oh, man, this is pretty badass. Yeah. Uh, then I think you'll dig it. Yeah. No. So, you know, if you're if you're Rod and Todd Flanders, it might not be your thing. If you're Nelson Muntz. It will be your thing. If you're Bart Simpson, it you will be your thing. <laughs> Millhouse is an edge case. Yeah. Mill, Millhouse is the daywalker. Yeah. He got sick of Bone Storm pretty quick. <laughs> he did. Like, well, he, he was just <laughs> cup and ball, eh? <laughs> Ten attractive nuisance. Yeah. <laughs> you never know which way that ball's crazy ball is going to go. Oof. Yeah. Um, uh, let's get into it. Let's do it. Um, yep. uh, so it's going to be real, real uh, quick about the notes. Yeah. 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 It's, it's going to be a real weird episode structurally. There's so many levels to talk about. Uh, you know, it's going to be less of a beat by beat and more of, uh, just kind of like, Hey, what is this levels deal? Uh, what does this introduce? And then like the little story, you know, the, the environmental storytelling that goes on, we're going to be yeah. moving through them probably pretty quick. Like at a doom guy, like pace. Yes. Um, and keep in mind that in these levels, you know, just for terms of, in terms of critical evaluation, even if we're not discussing the nuts and bolts and real level design that goes into creating these ambushes and combat scenarios um, across the board with a couple of exceptions, they are thoughtfully designed and executed. Mm -hmm. Like you will go into an area and there will be a clever ambush (laughs) where you might get caught by it. Getting caught by it is not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. You realize in retrospect what you did wrong. No. Um, So you learn something next time. And it is an interesting mix up of enemies and scenery to make a fun little action set piece. Yeah. Uh, time and time again, multiple times per level, you know, at a at a constant pace. Some, so, some of those ambushes pay off like their punchlines to jokes that are told. through. Yeah. Play. Yeah. 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 They're, this game has a sense of humor yeah. uh, to it. We didn't you know, we didn't really talk about that in terms of tone, but like it is meant that is part of the idea is to be funny and scary. Mm hmm. Uh, in this and i laughed a lot yes while playing the game sometimes from the uh the narrator that gives you the kind of text mm-hmm. that pops up there's an enemy that comes up that's a dog it's very <laughs> funny and after you kill it it just says bad dog yeah <laughs> uh, which i you know i love um you know there's things like that there's also little bits of me laughing at myself like the first time uh, we'll, we'll talk about these when they come up but there are levels where you lose your flashlight mm-hmm. um which is a great example of something that happens in game design where making you feel like something's a big deal but it's not yeah uh which i love like that's mm-hmm. i don't know what the name is for that but it's it's really impressive when i notice it yeah and the amount of times i was reflexively hitting it and just having that message pop up <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I forgot. over and over yeah you broke your flashlight in the fall like eventually just made me giggle because yeah. i was just like i'm so desperate for you to have this back guys <laughs> yep. you are you're you're playing me and i love it yeah just the the, the the amount of time that that, that happens like it, it it tapped into like a real world feeling like during a power outage when you walk into a room and you hit the light switch like it's it's yeah. it's literally just a reflex yeah yep. yeah yeah that's great 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so we're, we're going to get into it uh, with episode one, The Foothills. Um, and then E1M1 is Head Cheese, uh, which is, you know, meaningful because that was the original title for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, mm-hmm. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a much better title than Head Cheese. Yeah, Head Cheese is a horrible title. It's a bad title. It's a bad title, bad food. <laughs> yeah. uh, lots of cholesterol in brain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm not, not interested in Head, che- head Cheese. <laughs> Uh, but you start out in a basement. Like this whole first level takes place in a, in a farmhouse. Uh, yeah. You know, you just you starts out. You have lifted yourself off of these meat hooks that the cultists have uh, put you on, and all you have are these sickles. And you are attacked by these three farmers, uh, these chainsaws, uh, the leathernecks is a, yeah. is what they are. And let's let's we'll camp out. You know, again, we're not going to get too detailed, but let's camp out in this beginning a little bit. Yeah. Because uh, this was, you know, he, he talked about this in interviews. Um, as this kind of being a little bit of an anti-tutorial almost, mm-hmm. but I can't, it's really hard for me to express how much I love this. Mm-hmm. Um, FPS is oftentimes begin with like, hit the WASD keys to move around. Yeah. Use the mouse to look around. Yeah. Look up. And are you happy with your, with your configuration? Yeah, exactly. Like, you oh, you're in a power a, drive. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, maybe you are, uh, you're being tortured or something and somebody like moves their flashlight and you have to follow the flashlight. Mm-hmm. And like, I get that. And games have gotten really winky and cute about yeah. different ways of incorporating that into the story. Every single time it happens, I'm like, I fucking know. Yeah. Like I, I do. I have a really intense. One of my favorites of those is Isaac, where it's just written on the floor in the first room of the game. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. You know, like getting that done as quick as possible, as opposed to being cute with it. Mm-hmm. And he talked about this decision because in traditional game design kind of rules, this is a bad choice Yeah. because you can die. But he's like, actually, though, you have tons of health and mm-hmm. tons of armor. There are a bunch of health and armor pickups after this. Yeah. If you die, there's no start over. So if you die, you're going to die maybe once. Mm-hmm. You know, these enemies actually aren't hard. They're more intimidating than anything. Like, yeah, he knows that he can convey an idea about kind of the world and hostility of it mm-hmm. in a low consequence way that feels high consequence. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, so the fact that you were locked in a room with these guys, you are, you are outnumbered, uh, them being intimidating is, you know, it's a big part of it, you know, they're Just, huge. Yeah. They're, 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 gi- they're gigantic. They have, they, they have chainsaws like in mm-hmm. Resident Evil four, that's an instant death attack. Right. Yeah. You know, but they're pretty slow and they don't do that much damage. You, on the other hand, are very fast and you have the ability to literally run circles around them. Yeah. Like, uh, like I found this to be incredibly empowering as a, as, as an opening. Um, yes. and it like, I don't know. I felt like it was a good tutorial because it taught me like the sickles are not a fail state. Like this isn't yeah. the, this isn't the gauntlet from Quake three. Like, no, like these, these are really good. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, it's a great opening. Yeah. You know, and just uh, and and the voiceover here that will talk to you throughout the entire game just says mm-hmm. "kill the unbeliever." Yes, uh, here you know you are in deep in enemy territory in this cult. Yeah, feels good. <laughs> yeah, wow. uh, but you kill them and you can get out of the uh, get, get out of the basement here, and you are introduced to the mages. I call these cultists, uh, but they're they they're kind of dressed like clansmen. You know, they're there is a clansman energy to them. Yes, you know, uh, which is like a white cloak you know like cult. yeah they still they read his cult they read his both mm-hmm. they have a symbol on their chest which we'll see which is also the symbol on the keys it's the mm-hmm. symbol of the cult yes uh which we'll get to uh when they see you they all the enemies have a bark yep when they see you so you get an audio cue uh audio cues are really important yes um just real quick while we're adjacent to generalities mm-hmm. um one of the things you know when you boot this up you get the dos beep it's really cute mm-hmm. it says it might take a little while yeah and you might think like and this game is not undemanding on systems and you might think that's crazy because it it looks like quake um, but the reason why is one, uh, the audio is really rich and there's a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like full three dimensional audio stuff going on. Like it says to recommend, it recommends playing this with headphones. If you do, it's great. Like you'll get tons of audio cues yeah. and stuff you won't otherwise get. The other thing that I wanted to mention is how much customizability you have over the game. Mm-hmm. 
Um, this has, uh, you can change the color palette of this, mm -hmm. um, in its entirety, uh, either by sliders or through presets that eight different games, um, <laughs> you can turn this and it changes the contrast and colors and stuff. So like there's one that's human revolution. Yep. <laughs> like it turns everything kind of yellow and gold and looks a little bit like human revolution. Yeah. There's ways to do it like in black and white and sepia tone, uh, things like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, 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 like that is so, I don't like, I don't know, like if people like, where, like where that started or whatever, but I love that when it pops up in something like the shrouded Isle or the world of horror demo, where are just like, yeah, just change the color palette, evoke this particular thing. Um, yeah. man, just, it's fun. What mood do you want? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. so, um, I, I chose regular. I, I, I yeah. just, I stuck with the, you know, basic, but it was nice. Oh, yeah. It was there. Yeah, me, me too. But I just want I want to talk about the sound and then just want to make sure that got a shout out. Yeah. It also, if you uh, you can change the field of view and if you change it to maximum, which is undoable, mm -hmm. uh, the setting is called cynical based after the cynical bread who constantly complained about field of view. Yes. Stuff in games. Yeah. So kind of cute. Yeah. Um, so you're making your way out of your, this basement into this these kind of outlying farm areas. Mm -hmm. um, there are secrets galore here. There are like underground tunnels mm -hmm. um, you can find uh, to come up in another house. Uh, which I did. There's another tunnel where you can find the super shotgun mm -hmm. um, here. Uh, you know, you're rewarded. We're going to do a couple other enemies. There are these bulls. Yeah. They're outside. called black Philip. And I have no idea why. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a reference the to the witch. witch. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah, not seen the witch. I literally just, black I'm Philip. just looking at, just looking at the, uh, the wiki right now. So. No. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, it is taking a lot of my effort not to say, see the witch. I, I just wanted. I, I want. No, I, I meant to back during October, it, but really things got. No, I, I know everything about you says see the witch. <laughs> it's fucking fine. And also, oh, did you see the lighthouse too? Okay, I watched, but well, watch both of them like at it. once. I, I fucking yeah. know, man. Yeah, yeah, I know you fucking know. <laughs> this is the energy you're bringing in 2020. Uh, <laughs> More confidence. <laughs> I saw Little Women yesterday. It's pretty good. See it. Okay. See it I, all. I, I, I fucking believe you. Don't go see Little Women. It's only all right. Um, it's good. <laughs> The uh, but anywho, that's the, that's this black Philip. Um, these things, there's a colorblind thing with these. They shoot a projectile. Mm -hmm. These uh, these these bowls, um, bowl things, and uh, I cannot really see it. So I oh. did fiddle with the color a little bit until that stood out. Gotcha. Yeah. No, but they just they. It's weird that the dog enemy also has the projectile. Um, yeah, yeah. I I the, well, I just kind of since I couldn't see it, I just thought I was getting hurt. Yeah. I didn't really understand what was happening. Right. Right. No. Um, I mean, the, 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 the cultists, the, the mages have a, have a projectile. Yeah, a too. very clear projectile. Yeah. A slow moving a clear projectile. One. Yeah. 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 It's, I think the, like the Blyfield, but like it spits like a little blood ball at you or something like that. Yeah. It's, it's hocking up a lug. Yeah. Um, yep. but yeah. Uh, also, you know, you start out with the sickle here, you get the pistol. I love the pistol. Um, it is incredibly satisfying. I don't know why, but just, uh, like the, the pistol in half life and half life two. And here, the just the ultra fast move, the, the ultra fast shooting hit scan weapon mm -hmm. is satisfying. Just to like pling somebody down from across the map. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Uh, very, very good. Um, and becomes very useful when you get a certain power up, which we'll get uh, first in episode or mission two. Yes. Um, so we get uh, the shotgun here. We got double pistols. We got super shotgun. If you can find that secret, mm -hmm. or the weapons, and you're basically just making your way out of this area with uh, with farms into more surrounding farmland yeah down to mission two down on the farm yeah. uh which is a hell of a like a like a statement for how open yeah. this game can be yeah. yeah this is great yeah um tons of secrets and opens up with a little arena around these hay bales mm -hmm. and you start with where you pick up the rapid fire totem the totem, <laughs> totem of fast fire yeah well it's, it's like called. like you walk up it, like you pick that up and there are a bunch of cultists standing in a circle mm -hmm. um and you just mow them down yeah, it's it's so this is a power up that, uh, you know, there are a few power ups in this game. They last for a limited time. They're not items. You can't use them. Mm -hmm. They activate as soon as you pick them up. Um, they're oftentimes placed in arenas where music will kick up. Mm -hmm. And this just makes your fire rate incredible. Like your pistols turn into a machine gun yes. and your machine gun just gets absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. um, it makes everything good. Yes. Um, so. Yeah. And I mean, like just necessary for boss fights. There will usually be one of these around. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um to your right is a corn maze in front of you is another house um mm -hmm. in front of, behind this barn just kind of exploring these outbuildings yeah. uh, extremely fun one of the ways that they hide secrets really consistently in this game they're cracked walls yeah uh and before you find an explosive weapon um you can find gas cans yes and put them there so you can bust into one of the silos 
there. Yeah. Um, I love this corn maze. Yeah. Specifically because like, you know, on the near side of the corn maze, you see, you see some scarecrows. I think, oh, one of those things is going to wake up and come after me. And they don't, they don't. like, okay, no. Yeah. But then you, you know, you get through the corn maze, which is real, real simple. Um, although there are like two parts to it like there's a there's a left one and a right one that are separate mm -hmm. you have to get get in from different places but like when you exit when you find the most obvious exit uh there's a scarecrow right there and no he gets up off of his stake and comes after you with a shotgun yeah and they're incredibly uh, and, difficult like it takes like yeah. three uh, like three super shotgun blasts to take them down yeah they're, they're a mid tier enemy they're a dinky yeah. middle enemy um and they are they make a horrifying noise yeah uh <laughs> and then later again like talking a lot of sugar about dusk um it is not that from this point forward every scarecrow will come to life no that would be the easy way to do it mm -hmm. no it's about two-thirds of them yep <laughs> so you will see like there's a point uh in the um i think the sawdust yeah, yeah. it's in sawdust where you get to a cross section like a, a t intersection and there's a scarecrow at the middle of it and i'm like Ugh. like <laughs> I, I know i gotta walk past that it doesn't come to life Yep. But I'm like backing away from it because I expect it to. <laughs> yep. It's so good. Well, there are also ones uh, that don't that don't get up right away when you go by yeah, them. It's just later. that they get up like after you do something else in the level. Yep. So good. Yeah. Just like so good. There's also just again that grungy horror, folk horror feeling to this as you're going into the maze. Um, there is a uh soldier mm -hmm. hanging about the entrance and a sign that says sinner next to it. And God mm -hmm. do I love folk horror. Yeah. Like I love backwoods. Mm-hmm scariness they're, they're doing some uh interesting stuff here because like you don't see a soldier like for, for, and, and, for, a, while. for a while like they like, yeah. they do this a couple of times in the first in the first level uh or the first episode here rather where they are foreshadowing enemies you're eventually going to get to yeah they do a lot of forward backward stuff like that they foreshadow enemies they also have enemies get introduced as bosses and then be remixed as regular enemies like which right is kind away. of a classic yeah pretty quick <laughs> yeah which is a classic game design thing but the, mm -hmm. you know this game does it too and yeah. uh it's fun it gives you that feeling of like this is impossible this is really hard and like no 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 i just have to manage this mm -hmm. fucking good enough um <laughs> you, when you get through past the uh the corn maze there is a little forest you walk through uh that is a combat arena with exploding toxic barrels mm -hmm. um and such to get to this bar or this like shed um you get through the shed there's a tractor and there's a button that opens up a secret door um the secret door is inside the corn maze mm -hmm. um you have to get on top of the corn maze to get to it i love that <laughs> yeah it's really you know you have to stack some stuff um and it's part of the like suite of secrets mm -hmm. uh in this um that that's really really good uh if you go to that thing that secret door um you open up another secret door to get to the secret level Mm -hmm. of this mission you can also go down there and find a basketball if you pull teleport the basketball out and put it through the basketball hoop mm -hmm. it opens up another secret thing that opens up one of the developers like chris houlihan rooms mm -hmm. which is how you get the sword and just like an absolutely incredible amount of wealth early on <laughs> Like fill up your, your both your health and armor. Yeah. I just I just love that it is like a like a nesting doll of secrets. Like oh yeah. you know you, you might think okay I get up here and I get the riveter that's cool it's like a rocket launcher didn't expect yeah. to get it that early oh it's a it's a secret it's a secret level you know it's a it's it's an alternate exit that takes you to this uh you know to to, to this bonus no uh, like there's a, there there's a level even beyond that like this level is so fucking dense we're gonna yeah. pick up the pace on these because eventually the stuff that we're outlining becomes de rigueur but like yes. just as an introduction again a hell of a statement on how open this is yep and and just you know my video game like good you know comfort zone yeah. is being in an outdoor area with lots of smaller indoor areas to check out mm -hmm. like outbuildings you know metal gear solid five yeah like let, let's take out some outbuildings mm -hmm. love an outbuilding mm. um the secret level uh in episode one is called the dim slough um slow slough the, the dim sloth yeah the sloth um and this is kind of a swamp Mm -hmm. zone um you know there's not a whole lot to this as a little bit like the actual the all three secret levels i don't love yeah and this, the radicomes is a little wink like we didn't talk about that enemy a weird secret hardest enemy in this game are the rats <laughs> um because they're hard to line up and kill yeah and they do like more damage than they ought to it feels yeah. like yeah they're, they're serious and i think i feel like the developer understood that and then made the radicomes yes um but they're they're a big pain mm -hmm. uh and but the the first two secret levels you get to there's not they're not standouts to me no like they're fun because i find dusk levels fun but they're not worth it, talking about that much it doesn't it it doesn't they, they could just have swapped out with with a different one they could have just mm -hmm. been a, reg, a regular 
regular thing. And I wish this, these had been like, you know, it's not a big problem or anything, like, but I would appreciate like, oh, it's the development offices or something. Yeah. Something yeah. a little bit more like a little winkier and, and stranger. Yeah. Uh, like my, my template for this is the secret levels and zombies at my neighbors, honestly, yeah, which are, you know, goat. Yeah. Um, so the, the actual, uh, real next level is old time religion. Mm -hmm. um, which again, I love mission three. <laughs> Yep. Um, and it has you going to, into uh, some cave tunnels that are deep beneath this church. The church is uh, immediately locked away. Uh, this is the first time you're really dealing with like heavy keying going on. A um, mm -hmm. bunch of different outbuildings you have to get into um, after you find the first key here. Um, and they introduce, they give you the assault rifle. That's a, it's, mm -hmm. it's an M60 machine gun. Nice. But when you pick it up, this is when the sea of rats comes at yeah. you. You're going to back up. Yeah. Uh, back up here. There's also the beginning of this level is worth talking about because it ends with a large or begins with a large period of quiet time. Mm -hmm. um, I know I'm not going to bring that up every time it happens, but I just want to make sure it's mentioned as part of the texture of this game. Yeah. Is that there will be long stretches with no enemies. Right. Um, there, um, there are it's like specifically in episode two, like levels that are built around that. Yes. Uh, and I love that. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're going through, uh, these tunnels that you mentioned, um, you had to eventually have to crawl through a sewer gate. It has the feeling of being a secret, but it's not, uh, the right. game will tell you when you find a secret. Mm -hmm. Um, we find some graffiti kind of learning a little bit of kind of what happened, but again, you know, that's almost feels like an overstatement. Yeah. You know, bad science happened. <laughs> right. Um, you see some graffiti. It says we traded God for demons. Mm -hmm. Um, and there is a boss down at the end of here. Um, yeah. one of the things I like about this game is that most of the bosses are optional. Yes. Um, not all of them, but you can almost always run past them. They have a little bit of friction to stop you mm -hmm. from doing it easily, but you can usually do it. Yes. So. Yeah. Um, like, and this is, weirdly, that is mixed in with something that makes no sense in this game, which is uh, the pacifist run. Yeah. 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 <laughs> getting through, uh, getting through these things without fighting a guy mm -hmm. uh, is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is the first boss, the intoxicator. <laughs> um, Somebody clearly just thought of that pun. <laughs> Yep. It's an alcoholic alligator. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, you're, you're fighting him in a sewer that just has a bunch of beer bottles laying around. Yep. Uh, and he kind of scoots around pillars. Like basically you have to kite him around pillars. He, mm -hmm. uh, he shoots this toxic spray at you yeah. and you, he doesn't have very much wind up for it. You want to just kind of feel the rhythm of his attacks and make sure there's a pillar between you and him. Yeah. Um, can be very difficult, mm -hmm. but is not insurmountable by any means. Yeah, it took me like a couple of tries before I figured him out. Um, yeah, yeah you, you, so you can drink beer. Like the yeah. beer bottles oh, yeah. are inter interactable here. Like, and eat hash. What's that? And eat hash. Yes. Yeah, just um, cans of hash. <laughs> yep. Ugh. Oh. Um, um, there's a couple of little like interactables that are uh, in the levels that are fun mm -hmm. uh, that have Duke Nukem 3D energy. Um, you can find a computer that has you playing the game and you say you don't have time to play with yourself, which is uh, directly from of course. Duke Nukem. Yeah. Um, there are pictures of the developers and stuff on the walls. There's like different art. <laughs> yep. That is, that is a uh, scary mm -hmm. that you'll find one of my favorites. Uh, so there's two things. Also, there's a bar of soap in every level. Uh -huh. um, if you find all those, that's an achievement. Um, yep. It's hidden. Yeah. And uh, you can flush anything down a toilet. Yep. <laughs> the, the, the bar of soap is uh, where the, so it is a, it is a one hit kill projectile. Mm, if yeah, you throw yeah. it in an, uh, throw it at an enemy. Yeah. Yep. Um, but there's only one per level. Of course. So it's kind of tricky. Um, and yeah, you finding books, putting them on the toilet and hitting flush and just watching the books go down is fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, go down the hole. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, mm -hmm. mission four, I, I didn't make, did I find this very notable. Like it's kind of a bummer. Steamworks is just a maze level. Um, yeah. it's notable cause you get the super shotgun. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they, you know, they, they, they were very observant. They understood how important the sound is on a super shotgun. Very satisfying yes. tactile. -y. Yeah. And you, and you can get this before, but it's yeah. hidden. This is where you yeah. find it in the main thing. There is not a lot to this level, but again, it 12 minutes. Yes. So it's a maze, but you're, it's like kind of a maze. Yeah. It's, it's an industrial zone. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, like when I say maze, what I mean is like tight corridors with no visibility. Yeah. It's not outdoor level. It's not going in and out. Right. Uh, which is the superior kind of level, but mm -hmm. this is not. Uh, you know, the worst of these type of things. Yes. Um, and it's nice because it opens into a, a highlight for mm -hmm. episode one, a really good level, not yes. the highlight, but I, a highlight, which is sawdust, mm -hmm. um, which is really great. Yeah. Um, this is a logging site. Um, really, really wide open, lots of little outbuildings, lots of little uh, secrets and ways to get into hidden kind of like attics and such in these sawmills. Mm -hmm. 
uh, which is really fun. And you get my favorite weapon in this, which is the hunting rifle. Yes. Um, and it's like, so, so something that they do that is really goofy. If you just look at it and, you know, try to explain it, but like when you find a, a weapon that, you know, works a little bit differently, um, like it will spawn enemies and give you like a little tutorial thing. So like when you pick up the hunting rifle, it gives you a shooting gallery of wizards to practice using the zoom shots. Any weapon mm-hmm. can be zoomed in. You just press the right mouse. Uh, but mm-hmm. for this, it really matters. Yep. Yeah. Um, and you get the most zoom in. Yeah. For this. It's very nearly a one hit kill. Yeah. On almost everything. Mm-hmm. So yeah. It's good. Real good. <laughs> um and, and just really like you know that your sight lines are really long. Yeah. In this level. It's not linear. Like to your left there is a train track and to your right there's like a set section of rolling hills mm-hmm. that kind of go down. Like you can kind of explore this in a couple different ways. Yeah. And you don't have to get everything in this level, which mm-hmm. I really love. Like you can leave large swaths of it unexplored if you want. Yeah. Um that's also, I mean, it's worth mentioning that as, you know, something that couldn't be done back in the day. Like those sight lines, the long sight lines yes. on that, you know, like it would have been fogged out. You know, they're like yeah. draw draw distance was an actual thing then whereas here it is not so like sniping is viable in a way that like you really couldn't do that in blood or quake yeah, yeah. when the, when there when there's fog it's very intentional yeah and in interviews with this guy that's one of the other things he talks about is like you know a pretty standard point for us but just it's nice to see somebody echo it is that you know the graphics fidelity arms race is mm-hmm. dumb you yeah. know it is it is fool's errand and the uh and you know he says like you know i've seen like photorealistic games that still have like draw in and fog and like, you know, bad sight lines. Yeah. Like, you know, the, these things that are actually extremely important, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a quote he says where he's like, um, graphics fidelity is not as important as developers think it is to players Mm -hmm. and probably not as important to players as they think. (laughs) Right. And I, you know, and I I think that's probably true. Yeah. Just like, just like there are actual improvements that has been made to the technology that make a functional difference that, should almost always you know like if if you're going to make an exception or claim that that, you know your decision is an exception um you better have a really good reason to justify it yeah yeah it's like they have have sight lines but yeah sight lines uh when you get into this button to go into the sawmill you get trapped again a little joke Mm -hmm. right (laughs) Um, dropped into the cellar with kind of a mini boss. Yeah. Um, this new enemy, these fork maidens, (sighs) which are kind of female, uh, scarecrow. Right. Ladies. Um, and they have a very fast moving projectile that will fuck you up. Yep. Uh, weirdly enough, their wind up for it is slower than the projectile speed. Mm -hmm. So being close to them and watching when they start to do that and then circle strafing is better than keeping a distance. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> However, they're, you know, f- from this point forward, they're going to be mixed in with other stuff. And like keeping an eye out for their wind up was not something that I was able really to do. It depends on, yeah, if you're fighting them in a, like if you're fighting them from, uh, cause the, so the next level you mm-hmm. know, transitions well is the cutty mine, mm-hmm. which is a maze, but I like that. I think this maze is scary. Yes. Um, in, in a good way. And the way you fight them there is by managing their sight lines. Yes. By, you um, know, by, by strafing out, um, yeah, backing from, up from around, safety corner. around yeah. corners, mm-hmm. hitting them as they poke around corners, then backing around another corner. Mm-hmm. Quick cover is you know. what, you need, what yep. you need. Yeah. Um, yeah. In the, the cutty mine, mm-hmm. um, which is a back and forth, uh, maze getting keys, mm-hmm. uh, through here. Again, it's, you know, it's not as interesting as exploring a city or a farm, mm-hmm. but it is scary. Yeah. Uh, to me to me yes which i uh which i like <laughs> but yeah like just like the, this level is really about teaching you to deal with these fork maidens you know to a lesser degree with the uh, you know the mages but their projectiles are far more manageable right yes um yeah. yeah and at the end here you know you get that weapon speed power up that lets you mow through uh these remaining remaining enemies it's very empowering especially because those fork maidens in addition to being you know dealing a lot of damage they're pretty durable you know like they, they do not fall as fast as the regular rank and file cultists yeah yeah, yeah. which is something that's true of this game like yeah. enemies don't necessarily all melt right it is somewhere between a a doom and a modern shooter yeah you know, it's nothing is going to, you know, it's not Bioshock Infinite. Nothing is going to take two shotgun clips <laughs> right. to kill. But, you know, your super shotgun versus those those scarecrow guys, it's going to take a few mm-hmm. and take two or three, yeah. you know, depending on how close you are. Um, I, to me, this is balanced by the fact that you can get close yeah. to them. Like you're so much faster. They have these long wide ups. Like I, did, I avoided a lot of attacks in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, next level, uh, one of my 
favorites, not my absolute favorite. I think my favorite during this uh, is Ghost Town, mm-hmm. um, which I really love. Oh, and a walk. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Dead of Night is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, this kind of dense level that is uh, as opposed to wide. So mm-hmm. you are – it's a night, so it's cool looking and atmospheric. This like plot of farmland where you're going back and forth getting into buildings and grain silos, uh, just dealing with you know ambushes and enemies that spawn in as you – gain access to these new parts yes uh being outside like is incredibly dangerous uh getting yeah. between, getting between these things uh you don't want to spend a lot of time uh specifically in like the middle area kind of the no mm-hmm. man's land you're going to want to go from building to building yep uh this is also the they've been uh in the game before um there's one of them in the second level but this is the first level with a major emphasis on the uh springboard mm-hmm. like these uh these pads on the ground that launch you up into the air yeah um when I, enemies use these as well, and they're not intelligent enough to use them. You know, <laughs> well, there's not a, like tons of AI in this game, right? You know, like we're gonna run to the soldiers, and one of their barks is flank them, but they don't flank them. No, no. Um, you know, so they just uh, an enemy. You know, one of the scarecrows will be stuck on this thing, <laughs> just jumping up and down and shooting Whee! at the top of his. You know, Whee! it's it's very it's it's funny, and it's ends up creating an interesting, like almost a new kind of enemy mm-hmm. on accident. Yeah, you know, like a weird turret. Yeah. Um, their corpses can land on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can put boxes on them. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's fun. Yeah, it it, just, it respects all physics objects. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is where you get the crossbow. Uh, this <laughs> is a magic crossbow that is powered by fell magic. We're going to see where the magic comes from later on. Uh, but you get it in this hunting blind, and uh, it explains when you pick it up. Okay, this you know doesn't just pierce enemies; it pierces walls. To demonstrate the piercing enemies, it will spawn a bunch of mages in a straight line. Yep, and you can take you them all out with one shot. And I, yep. I would always underestimate how powerful this thing would be. Oh yeah, Th- this is this is one of the MVP weapons for me in the game. Like, yeah. um, and one of the reasons I end up using it, which I don't know how uh, intended it is to the the intended experience, but that idea, you know, when we talk about backing up into cover, mm-hmm. like you're dealing with an enemy that uh, is hardy, mm-hmm. backing around corners and then shooting that corner. Yep. <laughs> with this was something a way I got around to, like a lot of tankier enemies. Yeah. Um, this is very powerful. It's not hunting rifle powerful, but it is more powerful than the shotgun. Yeah. Um, this is a really great weapon. Yeah. It's constricted by a lack of ammunition, um, yeah. which is. And know, it's it moves slow. It's a slow projectile, which yeah. makes it a little harder to use. Yeah. Um, but still cool. Mm-hmm. Good for bosses. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're trying to get into this farmhouse at the other end after we're going through these silos. When we get in, there's a picture of a kid with spiky hair. Uh, this is the <laughs> guy who he partnered with to market. Uh, the game, when you click on it, it says it looks like a cult leader. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a picture no, of him from look, high school look, or something. Looks, looks like a middle schooler. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a middle schooler. Yeah. If he just said that, that would have been pretty weird. <laughs> yeah. Looks like a middle schooler. Yeah. You know? <laughs> smells like middle schooler in here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, you get into the basement. There's a little well down here. There's a bottle of lotion on the uh, mm-hmm. on the well. So Buffalo yep. Bill. Yep. Yep. Um, and when you jump down, uh, you actually get uh, uh, to fight the boss of the area, the uh, the Dusk Brothers. I think I thought they were the Duke Brothers. Are they? I thought so. Duke. Let me um, let me see you, here. You, va- you vamp, and, and I'll, it is I'll it is the Duke Brothers. Yes. I I, I Brothers. misread it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is uh, introducing a new standard enemy. Mm-hmm. Um, these are a little tankier. They are just big cultists. Yep. <laughs> yep, they're just they're, very tall. Yep, they 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 are very, very large cultists, VLCs. Uh, yeah, yep. get a look uh, at those VLCs. Yeah, and um, they uh, so they they differentiate visually. They like their their robes are a little bit more red, uh, but uh, these guys when they shoot fireballs, they home at you. Yeah, and they're not. Uh, they seriously home at you. Yes. No, they like, will they follow you. <laughs> they will follow you. The experience of fighting these guys is doing one long circle strafe. Mm-hmm. the entire fight um yeah. when these, these guys are really great once they start getting mixed up with regular cultist mm-hmm. um i like that they have from a certain distance they have a similar silhouette yeah the coloration is different but even you know i could i could differentiate the color but sometimes i'd mistake them right and that would get me in trouble because i would dodge a fireball expecting it not to follow me uh-huh you know uh but yeah these guys are great yeah uh, uh, uh big boys s- some, something that i love um is you can even do this here like you know the, you know, the 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 fireballs will follow you but you can trail them into the enemies as well oh yeah yeah i'm glad that you brought that up yeah um, um and that, I, that plays into something, something else from, okay 
Yeah, well, just in general, that will happen. It's something they took from Doom. Yeah. Is that if enemies hit each other, they'll turn aggro on each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love it. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, and like like there is a level near the end of this game where that is what you need to do to to, Mm. to live through it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. So, uh, good boss fight. I like this enemy. Uh, even though it killed me, um, I, I guess that 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 is what a good enemy is. Um, mm. they will kill you, but then you thank them for how they did it. I guess. Thank you, sir. <laughs> May I have another mm. in the next level for sure? Yes, uh, through the gate. The, through the gate, uh, yes. which uh, again we're outside. We've got this rocky canyon, uh, but we're edging into some higher tech buildings. You know, these are not just wacky shacks. We're getting yeah. into uh, what appear to be like factories and things. Serious shacks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the uh, stable shack. Stable shack. <laughs> um, the uh, so yeah, you uh, you kind of move through here. We eventually get the blue key. Um, this first area is full of large sight lines. Mm-hmm. Um, in this like, cliff area that reminds me of Half Life One. Yeah, quite a bit. Um, and uh, get this blue key until we can get into this house that has all this wiring. Yeah. Um, I love that you get the blue key off of an enemy that we're going to find later on. The welder. Yeah. I was yep. like, I saw that. I was like, oh, I'm going to fight one of those. <laughs> yep. Big fat flamethrower guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we start fighting the soldiers. Yep. Uh, and let's flank them. Yep. You go inside. Uh, yeah, yep. this, the, the, the mutated soldiers come at you. Uh, yep. And in order to, you know, rise to the occasion, you get a new weapon here, the the mortar, which uh, yep. acts just like the grenade launcher from Quake, uh, yep. the, the demo man gun from Team Fortress. I have loved this thing. Oh my yeah, that's great. <laughs> Really satisfying. Yeah. Um, I like the soldiers as well. One of the things that this game does is when it introduces enemies, it's not a pure escalation. Right. Like these are an alternative form of the base enemy. Right. Like they're so weak. Mm-hmm. You know, soldiers go down really quickly. Yeah. Um, they have a little bit higher firing speed, mm-hmm. um, but they're not like super accurate or anything. No. Like they're introducing new kinds of Goombas this late in the game, mm-hmm. you know, which I think is is great. Yeah. Um, Love it. Uh, when I say that the grenade launcher works like those other guns, I should probably say um, it it throws them out, but they do not explode on impact. You have to press the alternate fire to detonate them. They they will explode on impact with an enemy. They don't explode on impact on the ground. Right. That that, that, that is a good distinction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So at the end of this, we, there's a military facility we find with a, a gate that says "Welcome to Dusk." Uh-oh. Um. I love this little set piece. The the, the fort, the towers. Mm-hmm. Here, you know, the idea that again, you're just getting the suggestion of a story. Yeah. The whole environmental storytelling, like, oh, the the military came in, tried to cordon off this town, but got mm-hmm. corrupted. Yeah. They were drawn the in as well. Yeah. Yep. Um. Which can, brings in uh M nine, which is the best level in this episode. Ghost mm-hmm. Town. Ghost Town. Love it. Uh, it's a city yeah. block. Yep. Um, it is the better expression of those Sandy Peterson Doom Two levels back on Earth. Much better, yeah, yeah, because those those were not great levels, right? Cool <laughs> idea, but they didn't feel like towns. This is, you know, it has that Duke Nukem feel. Mm-hmm. Um, it also um starts off with one of the things about this game that again that I really love is enemies have to see you. Mm-hmm. Um, enemies are positioned to know where you're at generally, right. um, or to be positioned not to know where you're at, to mm-hmm. be positioned to see you when you enter a sight line. Right. However, uh. With, with uh, intentionality, there'll be levels where enemies start facing away from you, mm-hmm. and they have an air of stealth to them. Yeah. Um, and this is one of them. Like, your weapons don't – enemies don't hear, so you can use weapons on enemies mm-hmm. uh, here. I think they might hear explosions, but they don't hear bullets. Yeah. It, um, it's specifically like melee is the best way to go, and very specifically the sword later on when it yeah. does kind of encourage – like, you know, the text of the game says, hey – act with stealth on this but... yeah there's a stealth level yeah in this and it's not intolerable right like if you're imagining a stealth level in doom like right. it's actually pretty good yeah um but this is a dense city block where mm-hmm. you're going in and out of buildings finding these secrets um you know secret passages getting into the sewers uh, getting into the sewers which is fun like getting into uh, like these garages you're not supposed to get into climbing in through walls mm-hmm. <laughs> and stuff. Um, it's just like, it's put it in my veins. Like yeah, it is a yeah. fun little area to explore. Yeah. Let, let me get into a locked store. Let me get into the, like the, like the back room. Let me get into the sewers. That gets me into a house that I can yeah. get into the attic of and jump across to, you know, jump across onto the canopy of a gas station and get into like a library. I just yeah. love it. <laughs> Make your immersive sim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, developer, like, Shit. I didn't realize I was just, describing an immersive sim yeah no i mean this is this is there's a lot of that deus ex dna yeah this game um so the final encounter once you kind of make your way collecting key cards throughout this town um is in this big basement 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and the uh, the walls come down. This is a trick the game will do. Yeah. Um, where you pick up a thing and the walls come down, and there'll be these fork maidens, and then more walls come down afterwards. <laughs> so a good funny. Joke. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like oh, there's more. Uh, yeah. And so you know, like uh, specifically, like the, the the change in geometry and stuff does evoke, um, you know, antechamber and um, uh, specifically uh, Stanley Parable. And mm-hmm. I, I can I can kind of see a little bit of like I have no idea I've not read an you know an interview where he said this but like Stanley Parable is an amazing game because it does tell jokes through play even if that play mm-hmm. is just you know particular motions uh or particular particular movement that you can do within the engine here the fact that they can that he can just do a joke in in play without having like text as the setup is so good yeah yeah yep agreed again playing into that general you know him talking about him getting over his fear of gameplay and how gameplay can touch you in a deeper way than just seeing something can yeah like 10 times out of 10 and that includes jokes yeah you know like if you play a joke you feel it more than if you are told a joke yeah you know uh do don't show Mm -hmm. is the 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 video game mantra that everyone should aspire to internalize it yep yeah um so we have our final level here uh episode or mission 10 creations (laughs) yeah so um we have re- you know we ride a lift down into this uh, into the stage and there's a voice that actually asks us and addresses us are you prepared for what's next um yeah. and there are tons of items laying around notably there's no enemies yeah like you get into what is obviously a big open testing lab and there are some scientists who will run at you and attack you those guys are a real pain. Oh in the my deck. god, they do so much damage. <laughs> like the little, yeah. like the they're they're trying to attack you with a syringe. Uh huh. They're injecting you with you know goo. Um, <laughs> and they they have a their bark. They go, ha, ha, ha. Mm-hmm. That they do is just very like ooh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, love those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're opening up a, a quarantine cell to move forward. Yeah, uh, we fight a boss uh-huh. uh, named Creation. Hmm. Uh, which is a bad horse, <laughs> a very bad horse, like a big demon horse dog. Yeah, um, that kind of runs back and forth and then spews a uh, projectile. It's just a constant spray. Yeah, like he well, he does stop. No, well, he, yeah. he moves like a turret. He moves like, you know, Bart, those kind of uh, sprinklers. Like, oh. <laughs> which one do you prefer? Ask some big mini millhouse. <laughs> yeah, he, he kind of does like that. Yeah, um, he's hard to avoid, though. Mm hmm. Um, this guy gave me some problems until I realized, uh, the little shed that I unlocked him mm-hmm. There's like really good cover. Yeah. Like going in that covers you from multiple angles yeah. when he's attacking you. And then you can come back in and attack him while he's doing things. And again, just a joke, uh, <laughs> you go in, you press any of the buttons right. to kind of rush the end of the level and it opens up a, a second one comes out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> just to fight another one, which is great. Yeah. Um, because it, it seems like that'd be a huge fuck you uh-huh. uh but you get one of those the the totem of fast fire mm-hmm. power-ups yeah um which you can make pretty short work of him yeah you can also just run to the end well yeah at that point too mm-hmm. um you know but i i wanted to fight him because video know. games is fun yeah video games are good <laughs> so yeah. i'm in favor of them yeah yeah uh, specifically the like this boss was what convinced me that bunny hopping was the thing that i needed to do Oh yeah, uh, because of how quickly it could rotate and spew uh, uh, projectiles at me. So, like, you learn to take cover. I learn to move faster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and that ends uh, episode one. Yep. You you exit the level, and a voice says, "This is only the beginning." And it is. Um, we get these little text scrolls mm-hmm. between levels. It's like a gory doom background. Yeah. And and red chiller font <laughs> as we enter yeah. episode two the facilities the meat hook yeah. wounds in your back still throb as you make your way down the cold black and bloody hallways that once held those monstrous creations do you truly seek answers or is it simply too late to turn back yeah mm. and this is really different yeah <laughs> um you're gonna we're gonna get some wild shit in yeah. this episode like i one of the things i like about this game is that the the episodes are not like level packs no no they they feel very different totally different enemies really different tones mm-hmm. 
and moods. And it starts off with this first level right from the beginning, the granary, Uh huh. which is fascinating. Yeah. Like the design of this is really interesting. Yeah. And it's like, it's cribbing from older games. Like, like, the, yeah. like there, there are, there are levels that you know, specifically like early in Duke. And then I think maybe late in doom that like the, the specific like gameplay gimmick of this, the rockets raining down, down on you that he is explicitly pulling from. Oh yeah. 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 This is, this is, this is a wink, Yeah, but it's a cool wink. Oh yeah. It, it has this feeling of like, because so you're making you're on this uh this big section of two big fields with uh interior kind of sheltered walls like almost like a stadium so it's it's almost like a dry dock almost if this was not landlocked i would call this a dry dock but yeah yeah. uh in between your actual arena Mm -hmm. they'll be in through so you have to fight your way to this thing but there are these these fat soldiers these welder enemies Mm -hmm. up top that shoot uh these these rockets things that you they move incredibly slow yeah but they can see you uh-huh they don't have limited sight line you know right. they don't have a limited amount of distance they just have limited angles yeah so they're shooting at you from and it's fog it's intentionally foggy yes so you're just seeing these rockets come from nowhere mm-hmm. they're so slow you can definitely avoid them yeah but you don't really know what that is in the distance no it's i figured just, it was, was like, just fireballs like coming from the sky like yeah, okay this is the, coming, yeah yeah it's, it's just an environmental it's like a weather it's a weather effect that is put on this level no you're gonna get up there and deal with them but for the yeah, moment ever. like it is a yeah. constant thing you have to always be aware of while you're fighting in these dry docks yeah fighting these soldiers <laughs> um which are in full effect now mm-hmm. we're getting lots of soldiers now yeah um these uh i thought it was going to be like the boss of contra the first level of contra or something yeah like i was going to go fight like an evil wall <laughs> yeah. you know because it, it feels like they're coming from everywhere it's oppressive yeah Yep. Yeah. Um, and as you get closer and you actually see who they are, it's tremendously empowering. Like you don't have the hunting rifle that we've reset. Yes. So you're getting weapons really slowly. So you still have to kind of make, you know, play slowly, take cover. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you get to the third part of this level in the, the actual grain silo, it's just really complicated. Yeah. It's a really intricate little level of like going in and out of, you know, indoor and outdoor spaces mm-hmm. um, with changes of elevation Yep. within them. Um, where you can, uh, you know, go inside to get cover, fight a few enemies, go up some stairs, leave and be, have a different vantage point mm-hmm. to take out these, these guys that are harrying you. Yeah. Um, it's a, um, it's a, it is a great level. So, uh, lots of little like, uh, resupply caches, um, yes. just like kind of stuck up in the lofts of these areas. Mm-hmm. Um, and like a whole new movement power that you get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is uh, this little bit where you're trying to find your, you know, your keys. Mm-hmm. Um, you end up in the bottom of this like big grain silo, mm-hmm. uh, which is a real way you can die. Uh, yeah, no, uh, it's people a are drowning. Oh, you know, yeah, it, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a ridiculous thing. Like the explosion, the explosion is not necessarily the only way that that uh, can kill you. Yeah, yeah, you can die in corn. Uh huh. Um, and this it's one though, sound. you don't. And the uh, the guy kind of laughs at you. Mm-hmm. You know. But there's a power up down here that allows you to, if you press the walk button, mm-hmm. which you've never used before. Right. Because why would you? <laughs> uh, it allows you to climb up walls. Yes. This is time limited. Like, you can't just always do this from this point forward, which is good. Um, yeah. But yeah, you climb up the walls and your jump is not diminished off of this. So you can just leap across <laughs> entire spans. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, latch onto whatever surface is over there. And that's how you get out of the silo. Yep. And if you get out of the silo with enough of this left, you can get up on top and get some extra secrets mm-hmm. and such to uh, climb up to some top of some structures that are challenging to get yeah. to otherwise. And it's kind like, you know, if you don't figure this out right away, this thing just keeps on respawning. This, yeah. uh, the, this, this power up, you'll never be trapped here. And also like there are no enemies inside of here while you're learning this, uh, while you're, while you're learning this move. Yeah. Yep. Um, one thing I, I, uh, that I think is super cool that I didn't learn until I was doing research mm-hmm. for this episode. Right. So, um, I knew there'd be rocket jumping in yeah. this game once I got the mortar and there is, yeah. um, there's a secret in this level that's extremely hard to get to mm-hmm. and it allows you to get the crossbow early yeah. going outside this level, but, or no, it doesn't allow you to, you need to get the crossbow to get back into the level mm-hmm. because when you shoot the crossbow, you may have noticed that like it shunts you back it, a little yep, bit, pushes you back. Yeah. If you jump in the air and shoot down, you can just kind of like hover <laughs> by shooting <laughs> yeah. down with the crossbow in this yeah. game. I never did it. I just saw it online. I'm like, that's so fucking good. <laughs> I, I, it makes me want to play it again, knowing that. Mm-hmm. And just because you get, if you're just like shoot down every once in a while, it's almost like flying in super Mario world. Yeah. You've got a, you've got a hover. <laughs> yeah. The little rhythm of like, right. Yeah. Rah, rah. You can kind of bounce like sky hop. Yeah. 
over into things. And that's it's, so incredibly it's, 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 it's like a long distance pogo stick. When you nut exactly. in space, it push you backward. If you do nut in space, it does push you backward. Yeah. Never nut in space. <laughs> you smell it. <laughs> it gets um, in the instruments. Yeah, uh, <laughs> totally get in the instruments. It would, and also, like, I don't know, impl- you know impregnate a planet? <laughs> okay, Grant Morrison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. Like, I, don't want, I don't want my space seed. You know, I, I, yeah, I ain't gonna that's like, a real star seed pilgrim. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking for any any extra mouths to feed, any interplanetary Garys, <laughs> interplanet Gary. <laughs> yeah, like interplanet Gary Junior. <laughs> uh, you know, Junior Junior the third. Yeah, yeah. If you come in space, it would freeze instantly, right? I mean, yeah, but then it would break through stuff. You know, it's yeah. Yeah, Bur- burn up, burn up on, you know, burn up in the atmosphere. Bullet up another load, you know. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> it'd be hard to maintain an erection though in space. Uh, yeah, I mean, like specifically, like, like, your dick like would blow up, right? it, uh, l- lower blood pressure is a real problem in space. Yeah. Actually, it's very yeah. difficult to get an erection in space because of that. I could do it. I'm, if I'm, I was pretty <laughs> if, I mean, if, if, I, if I was, if I was. <laughs> <laughs> are we gonna start measuring horny <laughs> well i mean i figure those those eggheads at nasa probably have a way to do it already uh, yeah you know? i mean it's it, it is literally like a little sleeve that goes over it and yeah. measures resistance yeah. yeah yeah you know or, or i had to blow into some kind of like thing yeah like an air thing or just it just had like how how loudly you say yowza look at the gams <laughs> on that zoom. day yeah. Yeah, like if I saw Saturn, but it was a tit instead of a planet, yeah. and I was just like, whoa, 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 yeah, yeah. whoa, whoa, ringa. Yeah. You know? Bloop, bloop, bloop. How much your nose bleeds? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My nose would bleed. I would, like, my head, my eyes would explode, like, the end of total recall. It's kind of horny I am. <laughs> yeah, space horny. You know, for shooting loads. Yeah, exactly. No, no. It's a... I think we solved it. <sighs> Get some instruments. Science to me. <laughs> um <laughs> we're gonna have to figure it out we're gonna have to figure out how to how to do it in space oh eventually <sighs> yeah i think i could do it if i was horny enough <laughs> <laughs> i just love <laughs> there's just this very particular circle this very <laughs> <laughs> stuck in a real loop <laughs> yeah <laughs> Just because this loop, you're just like you constantly needing to prove that if 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 the need was there, if if needed, you could yeah. get horny enough to do it in yeah. space. If need be, and there was a big enough tit, like a planetary tit, <laughs> you know. Yeah, take that. Gary has been taking his juvenile humor and infecting the other shows. Go <laughs> um, <laughs> fuck yourself. Um, <sighs> Jesus God. Uh, uh, this moves us into uh, so at the end, end of this, um, you, <laughs> you get a rivet. There's a great little you get a little message that says "death from above." Mm-hmm. You get the uh, or you get the um, you get the rivet, but you, before that, you would get the uh, mortar. Yeah, so you can just like rain down like. Boom, boom, boom. Oh yeah, you like you 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 get up in the smokestacks and you just start taking yeah. them down. And that's where the uh, that's where the welders are. Yeah, the welders have uh, re re jiggered. Um, those guys blow up when you kill them. Mm-hmm. They have uh, flamethrowers on their back. Uh, good good use of hunting rifle. Yeah. Uh, for those guys, they'll go down one hunting rifle hit. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you uh, get this key, you can go back across the map um, and they just populate the like football field looking area with regular cultists. And then the uh, purple wizards, the Duke brothers. Yes. Yeah. Um, getting the homers out there. And of course you can use that to start fights. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, um, moving us into mission two, unseen. <laughs> yeah. I love this. Uh, this is, yeah, this is pretty, pretty, arguably best enemy in the game it's 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 great uh you know yeah. like it, and it's taking like a gimmick from doom that i don't necessarily care for yeah uh, they like the invisible enemy and turning it into really really effective horror yeah. um so unseen this is the level that opens up like the first two-thirds of this there's no combat really yeah like God. you're you're just in a level and you know there's nobody and then eventually you find corpses and strange bones um and then there's a message on the wall that says don't go into the ruins well i've been everywhere else and i have not found the key that i need to leave this level so i'm gonna go in the ruins yep and you get uh (laughs) you know and again that feeling of dread like i know i shouldn't do this yeah you go in you see a message on the wall says don't trust your eyes and it's introducing the uh wendigo yep um this enemy that is in this deer-headed 
like loping around on all fours Mm -hmm. monster uh, that is invisible until you hit it. Yes. Uh, Um, It is invisible except for the (laughs) the ding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that the, the happens. The little scare cord that hits. Well, it's 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 invisible. The way that you can tell is you will see bloody footprints coming at you. Yeah, yeah. Um, you hit it, and they're hardy. Mm-hmm. Like you, you want to get away from these things. They're fast and hardy, and do a lot of damage. Yeah. Well, and they, uh, they, they, they they've got no behavior other than to run directly at you. Yeah, which is true of a lot of enemies in this game. Well, yeah, but with okay. this one in particular, the the fact that it can get most of the way there without you being aware of it. Yes. Um, plays into it and makes it feel like less of a limitation of enemy behavior or more of like, this is what this thing does. Yeah. These are an emergency. Yeah. Um, there, <laughs> That's a way there, to put it. Yeah. Like, like you cannot suffer them in your player. There's a level, there's an enemy they introduced in uh, episode three that is like the update to these things. Uh-huh. The, the scream. Yep. <laughs> Guys that are also equally good. Yeah. The, the horrors. Um, yeah. Yeah. Those things are amazing. <laughs> Um, but just really scary. Like I like lost my shit. Like I jumped, Mm -hmm. I got very scared by this game and this enemy. Yeah. Something that happens, uh, playing this with a mouse is I have my hand on it and the mouse sensitivity, uh, you know, I tend to turn that down in video games. I think I I like less sensitivity than most, Mm -hmm. uh, gamers, but I, I have it, uh, you know, relatively simple. Mm -hmm. And, uh, as soon as I get seen by these things and they make that noise, my hand like goes, well, (laughs) <laughs> yep, and, and, my, and my, uh, you're pointing in a direction that you did. You don't know how you ended up pointing there. Yes, yeah, uh, and it, it's awesome. Yeah, like it just feels so good. You know, it's just like, oh god, like I got scared. My character got scared. Mm-hmm. You know, everything about this works. Yeah. So. I don't know. I think I could. I think I could get horny enough to not be scared. I hate, is there a way to measure it? Has NASA mm. figured out a way to measure it though? I, th- I think they have to take blood is the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which like your blood pressure is fairly low in space. So it's hard to get horny. Right. Well, I mean, it's hard to get enough blood to, yeah. Yeah. To measure to, the, to measure the, horn, the hormones. Yeah. My dad used to tell me that that blood came from your brain and that's why you mm. made bad decisions when you're horny. I think which that is was a weird the way to, to justify it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it's like a weird thing to say to your only son, yeah. aka probably your biggest mistake. <laughs> like you know, like uh, considering. Just, you, 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 I mean, in a in a way, it's because he was insulting your intelligence by thinking you couldn't connect the dots on that statement. Yeah, I, I know I come from your balls, old man. <laughs> You know, like I, I, I got it. I'm picking this up. I mean, I did, I wasn't offended when I was 11. Right, right. Sad, but now that's why yeah. I, was, I reacted to everything. But yeah. now, you know, yeah, you know, almost 30 years later, now yeah. I've got my groove back. I can get as horny as I want to. Well, I mean, especially in space, dude. If there's a big <laughs> enough tip. Um, so the, <laughs> anywho, uh, when you go back above uh, after this thing chases you, there are regular enemies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, and these things will be mixed up. Mm-hmm. These are not mini bosses. Uh, the no. Wendigos. Yeah. Uh, but part of that, like reading the level, like having your body feel what's going to happen is going into an area and just being like, OK, mm-hmm. like I bet there's going to be invis- I bet the windows are going to be here. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, this introduces uh, mission three into the thresher, <laughs> uh, which is kind of a big arena level that slowly like you move into. Yes. Uh, here, but lots of long sight lines and enemies sniping you from a distance. Yeah. Uh, this is the first level where I made a note of the turrets, but they're absolutely a factor uh, from this episode going forward. This is the first uh, appearance of them. Gotcha. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm 90% sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there are turrets in this game. Yeah. Uh, they are they are turrets. They make a very distinct audio cue so you know when they can see you. Mm-hmm. The way the game uses them to be tricky is putting them above or below you on the A, Z axis. Yeah. So you don't necessarily... Uh, you know, know where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and they'll, they'll wreck you up there. You, you yeah. want to deal with them. They like, they, they are specifically area denial and very effective area denial at that. Yeah. Um, you want to peek around a corner and snipe them. Yes. If possible. Yeah. Uh, good use for the hunting rifle. One of one, one of those shots would take it out. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like just, you know, it's a big open area. And what you're trying to do is get at the heart of this facility uh, and to see the thresher, um, and to proceed, you have to open up the maintenance access and get down into the awful shoot. Um, yes. some lore here. Uh, the thresher is, a you know, it's, it's, it is, it's a machine for pigs, Gary. Yes. Uh, you know, they, 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 they figured out, okay, we can get, we can get some power by doing sacrifice. Well, what if we industrialized sacrifice and that's yes. what the thresher is. And you're going to be inside of this machine. And it looks incredible. Yep. <laughs> Uh, because we're going down into mission four, the infernal machine, mm-hmm. which is a long fall. Yeah. And when you break, it's dark. 
and your finger without thinking about it reaches over to the f key Mm -hmm. and you just get that you break your flashlight yep uh, message and this happens a couple times in the game it's never bad yep you're almost never in danger you almost never fight Mm -hmm. without you i mean you almost always like find one right away but fairly it's it, you know yeah. fairly quickly but it is still just enough time in an unfamiliar space to, to, to feel like terrified yeah like i'm so used to that flashlight mm-hmm. you know I, I just i love the way that it, again it feels like it has huge consequence but if you you know know it's a paper tiger mm-hmm. you know you're actually okay it's not yeah. playing dirty pool it's not doing anything unfair yeah well it's not punishing you for a decision that the game made yeah 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 no real punishment mm-hmm but yeah, like this level, it starts out very, very cramped. You know, you like, you know, this is this is a maze level. You're navigating these chutes and tunnels, and there's an awful lot of like getting into a place where a body ought not be, at least not an intact body, um, and avoiding these pistons. Like this level is very trappy, very yeah. trap heavy. Yep. Can kind of sense fortress esque like walking, you know, between pistons are going through, or there will be blades. Uh, that are moving mm-hmm. you know the side that'll chew you up but they're fairly easy to avoid but they're they're I just, there I, I love the area where like you're looking down at a bunch of at a bunch of cultists and they're the the uh the the spinning blades and they're just like being pinballed in between them yep yeah. yep idiots <laughs> um morons so you, you, you you uh climb to the top of this uh shaft until you get to this like you know visually this game is incredible yeah um and sometimes there are just like moments that kind of take your breath away that you're not expecting and this is yeah. one of those things the reasons why i want people to play the game yeah. listen to stuff. this, you know, this is like something to, out of control <laughs> it's it yeah it is the visual so you you go down this chamber with this spinning blade maw at every step of the way you know multiple blades mm-hmm. spinning as like kind of a spiral thing you're walking into yeah it just looks incredible mm-hmm. like i stopped and took pictures a lot of this kind of stuff when I, when I was playing the game. Yeah. Uh, and this was one of the first ones and just like my jaw dropped. I'm like, yeah. this is so cool looking. Very powerful geometries happen. Yes. Here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you reach the end of this and you pick up the, uh, you pick up the blue, the blue card and it spawns a ton of enemies, enemies, enemies behind you. I think it even yep. brings back like it's a, a specific mixture of the homing cultists and uh, the fork maidens. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, and they all have just complete un, uninterrupted line of sight on you. Yeah, you can actually. So they, it, they well, have you, can, you can drop down. You. Yeah, you can drop down to this like below section mm-hmm. uh, and either scoop by them or use it as cover. Yes, which will work. But uh, the music kicks up. You're supposed to just you know well, pick up your weapons so, and fight. Yes. <laughs> Um, there is a secret weapon, a secret exit to this that is difficult. Um, mm-hmm. it's a little bit, again, of a fun troll, kind of like, uh, the great hollow, mm-hmm. like you find a destruct- destruct- destructible wall and there's another one behind it. Yep. And, uh, you have to, you know, if you don't have an explosive, you have to keep searching for these, mm-hmm. um, which introduces the foundry. Yes. Um, which is an interesting level. It's like a platforming level mostly yeah so there there uses lots of jump pads in a way that they haven't been used before um and you know it's a foundry you've got um molten metal and you've got mm-hmm. lava that you're trying to uh st- st- stay away from and this is like the introduction of a uh, power-up that lets you walk in the lava yeah uh but there are like really no enemies here there are, there are very few of them um like th- that's not what this level is about yeah yeah about um it, it is it is pretty interesting you know, there's not a lot of enemies, which I like. I think that's mostly about navigation. Mm-hmm. Um, overshadowed a little bit by the actual mission five, the Escher Labs. Yeah, um, highlight, highlight. Of yeah, the game. like this is this is extremely <clears throat> cool. Yeah, and the name gives it away, but still. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean it's not cool, right? Uh, um, so, in contrast to inside of the machine that harvests blood, uh, you are in this uh, sterile office area. Is how it begins. Uh, you know, there's mm-hmm. a there, there, there's a receptionist desk. It's manned by a soldier. You know, you, you know, they've got the the portrait of the cult leader back here. They've got the PC playing Dusk. It's very good. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, very Half Life vibes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're kind of making your way through here, just fighting normal enemies we fought, like the, the fat guys, soldiers, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, we get to, we go through this into the shielded room and there's a new artifact, new power up in the center. And a voice says like, go ahead and take it, take the power, get a taste of the power. Um, and getting it gives you super hot mode, yeah. which is just called that. It's shameless. <laughs> um, and it just, it literally just says time moves when you do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is an FPS uh, with this kind of enemy and area design where sometimes you have these super hot 
power. Yeah. Um, and there's a real tactical consideration on this because um, it affects your reload speed as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, faster firing weapons are better. Yes. Uh, in this mode, and you need to keep your head on a swivel, which takes up no time mm -hmm. looking around just to avoid all the projectiles. Yes. So, um, but pretty fun. Mm -hmm. And this will show up in a couple different encounters later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but, but like what I love about this is, you know, you've been proceeding through these labs at a certain point as you're trying to, as you get back to the main hallway, like you get a little, uh, you get a little dialogue line, your inner, you know, inner monologue narration it says like, Hey, something's wrong. Yeah. Uh, and like you start looking around the, the lab isn't like it was when you came in, yes. the geometry is getting weirder and weirder. Like the hallway starts getting radially twisted uh yeah. you enter like a teleporter labeled don't <laughs> i love the teleporter the don't yeah. like when it first starts getting weird like it's great because it doesn't just flip gravity like you'll go into a room and a desk will be on the ground but a chair will also be on the ceiling yes <laughs> like it's not just like you flipped right um and that teleporter just says don't which is you know again brilliant mm -hmm. uh you go into it and you end up in like a giant rib cage. It's it's like a rib boat. <laughs> yeah, you're in the flush flush zone for a second. <laughs> yeah, just to grab a space. Key card. Yeah, yeah. I think there might be a Wendigo in here. Mm, yep. Um, no, there are a couple. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because you can grab the key card and get out, and they'll chase you. Like enemies can use teleporters as well. Yeah. So like running away from this thing, and then just hearing the <sighs> <sighs> like you know breathing behind me as it teleported behind me is yeah. is wonderful. Yeah um yeah like you just so like there, there's straight up like escher stuff where you know stairs that you can't really you know walk on or navigate because you know gravity doesn't necessarily change it always points down it's the the stage that changes around you um and eventually you get to like a void with some floating fragments of floor you know yeah. it's like a, everything is kind of breaking apart and it's all around this central chamber which has a has a boss inside um yep. they're just straight up the toughest enemy uh yeah t toughest enemy yep. type uh it's, uh, they these are the, 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 the sultans of hell or whatever from Doom. <laughs> yeah like. so the the enemy type is called cowgirl uh but this uh this one is called mama uh and she comes out and you have to deal with her very quickly yeah she's a dps race yeah um or you can so there's a couple different ways to deal with her um it's tricky the arena is really difficult yeah. The way these enemies work is they make, again, this like kind of moaning sound and this metallic, like a rusty wheelbarrow, mm -hmm. you know, kind of being pushed around. Rustier, um, rustier, rustier, rustier. Uh, they shoot uh, missiles. They shoot rivets mm -hmm. at you um, with huge AOEs. Yeah. And but they have to bend over to shoot mm -hmm. like they sh they bend over and then like shoot it out of their face, essentially. Yeah. So you can kind of see when it's happening. Um, the trick is to never let them have a sight line on you, mm -hmm. which is really hard in this encounter yeah like you can kind of juke her around the middle platform but you have to be very careful with your footing yeah um and you can dps race her if you have enough health yeah because she will hit you and you will get knocked <laughs> around which is really dangerous because you're on these floating platforms right um, um, and now these are just about <laughs> we yep. now have these enemies and they're, they're always just mini bosses unheralded yep. mixed in they will mess you up yep yeah uh they are an emergency yeah so prioritize them <laughs> um the next level uh we go into i love this level yep uh the uh the erebus reactor yep um which is another it's very similar to the nameless city or any of those levels where it's just one big uh area mm -hmm. where you go in and out yeah uh, of things um there's not as much in there is some mm -hmm. in this but it's a big uh, reactor room where the floor is opening up to reveal lava Mm -hmm. um and you are just kind of making your way around this incredibly dense area full of enemies trying to find the proper key cards to escape right uh you have mama enemies thrown out in gen pop right away yep. um which makes you know like i don't know <laughs> like normally getting up above like there are catwalks up there mm -hmm. uh that you can get to and there are enemies who are sniping you down normally that would be incredibly empowering no it leaves you really open to these things yeah th it's not you need to be down where there's cover yeah you know, you need to be juking one of these uh, around one of the buildings. Mm -hmm. But you have to be constantly, like, watching your, your feet yeah. uh, here. And enemies, you know, again, the fact that they have no range to their their vision, just angles. Mm -hmm. You know, there are soldiers up on those catwalks. Yeah. So you're just going to have bullets being rained down on you. Mm -hmm. It's a real kind of order order of operations yeah. level. Like, prioritizing enemies and starting to, like, methodically clear them out kind of class by class. This took an awful lot of... um. Took an awful lot of tries 
for me. It's hard. Yeah, yeah. this is a hard level. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do like it. Yeah. Um, eventually, though, you do uh, get outside into this kind of impossibly large cavern uh, with uh, with like straight up nuclear cooling towers around. Um, and you get to this control room and you press a button. This isn't a cavern. It's like a gigantic city sized hangar. Uh, yeah. It opens up the roof to reveal daylight in these just like eight or nine skyscrapers. This does not comport with like the the farmland that you began with. Like you would no. see, you would see this from miles away. Yeah, you have you have moved through. You know, moving through the Escher Labs. Yes, has done something. Something's changed. Yeah, you yeah something has changed. The uh, first area you go in here before you open this up, I think is a direct level design uh, nod to the airport base in Deus Ex 1. Oh, yeah? Where there are those four towers in the corner oh, uh, yeah. on your way to get to the uh, Lebedev. Mm-hmm. That's what that feels like. Yeah. Um, when you make a move for this giant elevator tower, a boss pops out of the door. Yeah. A comedy boss. Comedy boss. Big John. <laughs> Big John, uh, who speaks in Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, voice quips. Yeah. This is pulled. Yeah. Like, this is a straight-up transplant from Rise, The Rise of the Triad. Uh, yeah. yeah yep um and this uh the face is the marketing guy okay you know the other the partner with him is, is stretched over his face yeah but he just you 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 shoot this guy and he goes come on kill me <laughs> you know kind of over and over yeah uh you have such an arena mm-hmm. that this guy is not difficult no uh but still kind of funny yeah you can I mean, you can you can do a lot of uh <laughs> like it took me a couple of tries on him the big thing for me was to soften him up with uh with mortar uh with grenades yeah. Because he doesn't attack until you go into that, uh, go into the hallway. So just like leave him a little trap and then <laughs> lure him out into it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You can also just run by him. Right. Um, we didn't really talk about it. There's a slide in this game, like a crouch slide. Yeah. yeah. And that will go under enemies. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can actually just run and crouch slide past him and, and get mm-hmm. past him and not fight him if you'd like. Yeah. Uh, but the exit here uh, is to basically take an elevator. You have to take this jump pad that flings you impossibly high up the shaft. Mm-hmm. Um, way up above the skyline in this elevator yep. tower, doing weird stuff with space. Yes. Yep. Uh, into mission seven, Neo Babel. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So you're up here, like basically in a. T- I don't even know what this is. It's like the top of a space elevator almost, and it's a combination of temples and labs high on a platform in a yellow sky. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, pretty cool looking. Yes. You know, uh, at the uh, at the very least, mm-hmm. um, I don't have a lot of concrete memories of this level. This one kind of runs together for me. Yeah. I mean, it's, which happens. it's, it's mostly, you know, like a, a couple of big buildings that you have to get into. Um, the big trick here that I think they overdo is when you grab keys or when you grab something, just enemies will spawn in around you. Um, yeah. and specifically, like uh, new enemies will be, will be waiting for you when you leave a building. Yeah. Uh, like just kind of in an ambush as it goes. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think it's more um, like the, 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 the statement, the statement that this makes is more visual. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like the, uh, I like the temple aesthetic. Yeah. yeah. To it quite a bit. It's um, like something out of Hexen. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And the, the, uh, publisher of this game did another game, a medieval, which is mm-hmm. on my list to check out, uh, which is another, throwback if this you know looks at quake and doom and and, and stuff that looks at hexen and heretic mm-hmm. uh, which i love i love hexen and heretic mm-hmm. very much yeah. um this moves on after you uh beat this after you get the, those keys and, and spawn it you move on to uh mission eight blood and bone um which is another like kind of hell facility mm-hmm. here um and the uh the big thing you're kind of looking for um as uh you know at the top of this once you get to the top of it is this big tesla tower mm-hmm this big lightning tower. Yeah. This is what's powering the artifacts, um, yes. including the, uh, including your crossbow bolts. Yep. Yeah. Um, and this is, this is a good like inside outside thing. This is, uh, introduces, or there might've been some in the last level, um, platforms like graded platforms. You can walk on the enemies can shoot through. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is kind of a pain. Like you have to kind of snipe them through it and it is hard to see them, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes exactly. Um, but you know, manageable. Yeah. Good, good opportunity to slow down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you get way to the top of this level, uh, you know, to the top of this uh, Tesla tower and fall down a hole and you're falling down this charged power line. 
uh, basically what it feels like as far below the ground as you got above the ground. Yes. Um, you're following long enough for like the voice that has been beckoning you to, you know, to talk to you saying like, Hey, uh, you know, they are taking something that has never been taken before. Yeah. Which is cool. That's yeah. evocative and great. <laughs> um, the, uh, and that, the, the visuals of you falling, mm-hmm. like the red rings you're zooming past. Yep. Like just really trippy. Like you're like on space mountain or something. I, I mean, it's, it's like specifically like the, toward the end of, uh, 2001. Almost. Yeah. 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 Really cool. Yeah. Uh, really, really phenomenal looking. Love it. Um, when you land your flashlight breaks, of course, ah, um, damn it. I fell on my keys. <laughs> I can't keep falling on my flashlight, which would hurt. Uh, yes. Um, and, uh, there's some invisible demons down there. It's one of the few times you have to do combat before mm-hmm. you get your flashlight back. Yeah. Um, but it's still like, well, lit. you're not fighting invisible demons in the dark. It's, it's a good set piece. Cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and if and, worse, uh, worse comes to worse, I think it, at this point I turned up the gamma to get around yeah. this. Like, oh, fuck, it's a PC game. I can change that. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't <laughs> change it that much, right. which is, is worth noting. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you can change it, but it, it's, you, it will never totally, you know, fix the darkness. Right. Um, <laughs> sorry cat lady's next episode buddy <laughs> to fix the darkness the, the uh darkness. so the uh so the message uh as you you there's a spiral staircase again another just like going down which is something i'm just a sucker for in games yeah, yeah. you know like just going down over and over and over further than you think you should be able to go down mm-hmm. um is you get a message that says the ruins held knowledge we sold our souls for it altars built of concrete fed with bone and blood Burma it's kind of telling a little bit. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Let's say exactly. it's hold it's hold it installations as you as you go down yeah. the spiral. Christ, Christ, Christ in uh, you know, Christ is our Lord, John three sixteen. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and you exit uh, the level when you get to the. It opens up at the end. You activate this machine that harvests that power. Yes. From uh, this gigantic heart like organ. Yeah. Uh, this is this is where I went. One of the areas where I got into I uh, got out of bounds. Uh, mm-hmm. You can get behind this as you're uh, as, as as you're dealing with it, and you can get the "you shouldn't be here, please leave" message yeah. in a texture. Yep. Um, and this opens up into uh, the dig, uh, the yep. penultimate mission here of episode uh, two. Uh, you're falling into this excavation site, um, mm-hmm. and it quickly transitions into this kind of underground castle like area of dungeons. The keys are no longer key cards; like you're getting a skeleton keys. Yeah. Uh, the first one you yeah. get is on this amazing void overlook. Yeah. It's, it's right next to like a processing facility. There are these like infinite factory. Yeah. <laughs> uh, kind of things. And you go outside and it's just endless black. Yeah. Yeah. Outside. Yeah. Which is just, you know, again, chef kiss. Mm-hmm. Um, you make, make your way through there and we get a, a, uh, again, another joke. Yes. Of this game where you get into a circular chamber, uh, and you fight son of intoxicator. <laughs> uh, and the, the text comes up and says, Oh, come on. Yeah. Uh, very funny, but then, you know, again, the actual joke is uh-huh. after you beat that open the door, yep. uh, you fight two mamas at the same time. Yep. The twins. Uh, yep. and what's great is the two of them, uh, mostly deal with each other. Like yep. they will start off fighting or they can be very quickly goaded into, uh, into attacking each other. And they have such a wide, um, you know, AOE yeah. on their attack. It's very easy to get them to clip one another. Yeah. So just bunny hop around them and they'll, you know. Yep. And it'll be okay. Yeah. Um, we're introduced to the final level of this, which I don't think is very good. Um, yeah. I don't like this level that much. Uh, the gauntlet. It's not great. Yeah, this is annoying. Um, this is basically a boss fight. Like, you start off getting resupplied. Mm-hmm. There are two teleporters, each of which has a small maze with two switches in it. Right. And when you go in there, it spawns an enemy called the Guardian. Right. Uh, who's this big reptile man. Um, and his he does so much damage. He fires <sighs> cluster bombs of grenades. Um, and at first I was like, well, he'll follow me. If I go back to the main level, I have a lot of room to like circle straight from and stuff. Mm-hmm. You don't want to do this. This is no, where you, you want to no, fight him no. in the corridors with you know, shooting the crossbow mm-hmm. through the, uh, through the corners. It's kind uh, of the only way to do it. Like I just yeah. get, getting him into the center is a lose condition. Yes. Yeah. And it's one of those things where, um, you know, like we talked about this before with boss fights where the way to make it possible is not very fun. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's an easy way to do this, but it wasn't very fun to kind of like just juke them around these corners. Yeah. yeah I don't think the guardian is like a, a greatly designed, like the, the boss in this game are not the highlights. No, no. In general, like they're, they're sometimes pretty fun, but and, I mean, like, and like the, the, the end of bosses of this are very good, but yeah. 
Yeah. yeah agreed. But the, this is not great. No, no. Uh, and like the, like the way that the language of the level is telling you to deal with them, like, you know, you get into these mazes and it's full of, you know, riveter ammo and you have, um, the, uh, the, the haste, uh, the haste power ups, like it is mm-hmm. telling you, like just lo- uh, unload on him with rockets. But like, if you are in a position to do that, he is in a position to out rocket you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and you like, you kind of have to deal with him. He will follow you, uh, you know, like, so you have to press all these switches and you could, you know, get around and outrun him. Something that's been happening, um, in some of these levels as you've gone on is, uh, there will be arrays of switches and you have to like input a combination on them. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to like trial and error your way through it. Just have to, you know, you've got three buttons. There are like nine combinations, just cycle through. You're good. Um, after you press all four of these buttons and open up the main path out, um, the actual exit to the level that unlocks the portal, um, is blocked by a four switch, um, combination pad. Uh, you cannot really do that with, with, uh, with the guardian breathing down your neck. Uh, you so, theoretically could if you knew exactly what to do. Well, yeah, but it'd you be know, difficult. It's, like if you're just yeah. coming at this the first time though, you like the, the game is saying like, no, you cannot get past him. You know, you need to. Yeah take him out so you have the time to do this we want to fight him but we don't want to have a door that just opens when an enemy dies right right you know um and there there's a couple of those like little switch puzzle things that are subversive tricks yeah like the one that releases the second boss of the first episode Mm -hmm. it looks like it's one of those switch puzzles but any combination opens it right you know it's just there to give you the feeling of that but and kind of induce some panic but it's not actually a thing Mm -hmm. you know um once you uh get through this um, we go through this flashing red tunnel to the next episode. Um, definitely the most ambitious yes. of these three. Mm-hmm. Um, episode three, The Nameless City. Uh, this opens up with a text crawl that pretty much just amounts to the only thing that's left is to continue into the heart of this nameless city. Yep, continue to go forward because video game. Mm-hmm. Um, but it starts with a really interesting level, uh, the Iron Cathedral. Um, this is the time where you most feel your weapons taken away. Yes. Um, you know, because you can go into, there's a little secret where you can get the uh, crossbow here, but mostly you get the sword. Right. Sword, which is a silent takedown. Um, you know, enemies will be facing away from you. Um, and you're introduced to the kind of advanced sword mechanics. <laughs> uh, so you can charge up your slashes when you're over 100 health, which is good. Yep. Like you can pretty which much one shot un- everything. Yep, one shot everything. And you can block if you're at over 50 morale. Right. Um, and that will take some of your morale, like mm-hmm. a meter, but it will stop any attack. Mm hmm. Um, um, that's very cool. Yeah. And it introduces like swordsman enemies that you have to deal with. <laughs> yeah. Like that, like that is the best way to do it. Yep. These, uh, the, they, they will rush you down, mm-hmm. you know, kind of screaming and rush you down, stop, take a sword swing and then move towards and do another one. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have to kind of, it's not parry. You have to like block these guys and counter attack yes. in kind of a melee mm-hmm. rhythm, which is real weird for this game. Like this yeah. starts with a stealth section that turns into a melee section. Yeah. You can really feel them kind of stretching, <laughs> you know, possibility here. Yeah. Again, episode three, two thirds of the way through this. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Um, so, you know, just, uh, you've got these floating chain mail enemy swordsmen, uh, which are going to flex that. I don't know what their name is. I can look, are they the priestesses? Uh, I don't they're know. priestesses. Yes. They're the priestesses. Um, you also get to the pedestal where the crossbow is normally found. Um, and the game kind of just nudges you if you forgot about this, uh, and reminds you that like, yes, the, the, this thing does pierce. You've got the, you know, the, the whole rest of the level is just tight corridors full of these wizards. Yep. And you want to be conserving your ammo because you've had to reset your armory. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) it ends with kind of a mini boss. Um, this dog without legs that's stuck in a wooden frame. Yeah. It's, it's literally just called cart dog. (laughs) 
Kurt Dog. <laughs> um, it and, moves very fast. It is undeterred yeah, they, by geometry. They do really, they do tons of damage to you. Yeah. They charge you and they're really hard to dodge. The trick to them is getting them on a different Z axis. Yeah. Uh, stairs are the enemy of the tar- Kurt Dog. Yes. Because no enemy will walk over a ledge and fall. Right. Every enemy will seek stairs. Mm hmm. So if it's a melee enemy, stairs are your friend. Yes. Um, and when you kill it, it says bad dog. <laughs> uh, and they are bad dogs. Yeah. The rare uh, bad dog. Yeah. The rare, there are so many bad dogs. Dude. I know. Yeah. I know. It seems like all dogs go to heaven, but I think that probably like 49% go to hell. Mm, yeah. So, I mean, in fiction. Oh, yeah. In real life, like, <laughs> bad dogs are good. Yeah. You know, they make their heaven wish. Oh, yeah. Like a big bone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that, buddy. I was just thinking about what a dog might make for its heaven wish, my dude. Okay. All right. No. Yeah. Lots of food. We've been recording for a while. Large <laughs> leg to hump. Yep. Perhaps. <sighs> um, yeah. Uh, anywho, uh, this enters into M2 Fire and Ice, which is a huge level. Mm-hmm. Um, really, really uh, tons of visual striking. Uh, visually striking kind of areas. The beginning, these like series of platforms uh, into these lava lakes. Mm-hmm. With enemies down there that you can kind of snipe before you you make your way down, uh, which you're doing to get all the way down to the bottom to get these keys so you can eventually go up. Yes. Go all, all right. the way up to uh, a snowy mountain on top of yep. the snowy plateau. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so uh, you, you want to get into a hidden area to get a mortar because, yes. I mean, again, you're still dealing with your limited, uh, your, your, your limited arsenal. Like explosions are useful. Yeah. It's, it's not until the next level that you kind of get your full arsenal back. Right. Um, and you, when you're up on top of the snow area with these ruined outbuildings, there are four kind of corners of the outbuildings that have switches in them. Mm -hmm. Um, hitting all three opens up this cage as the red key. You're also going to get the hunting rifle, uh, up here, which you want Mm -hmm. because this introduces the flying enemies. Yep. Bone monks. Bone monks. Uh, they're kind of like torsos with arms, Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of float around shooting things at you, making like a, a scream. Yeah. Uh, as you um these are emergencies <laughs> they're not as tanky as like some of the other emergency enemies right but you want to take them out because they can get you from any angle really yeah and they appear in they appear in numbers huge swarms yeah yeah like this basically is a storm like mm-hmm. you're in the snow it's like almost white out conditions yeah and you'll just see like a whole bunch of these no i didn't even deal with these guys i got what i needed and i got back below ground <laughs> i was like yeah. i cannot handle this yeah not yeah. today <laughs> not to gill no (laughs) um this allows you the red key will allow you to go to the exit to go to a really like pretty amazing level yeah um Um, probably like my favorite classification of levels you know like kind of talking about these all in in order there's like you know indoor facilities and caverns mm -hmm. there is the indoor outdoor mix-up yeah kind of things and then there's these like city block levels yeah um and that's what this is and those are probably my favorite yeah um this is the city of shadows yeah uh this is good um, and the way yeah. that it changes uh, as as it go along, it might be the only time that I've liked a water level puzzle in a game. What's well, because the water doesn't matter, right? <laughs> like enemies don't react to it. You barely react to it. It I just know. means you can go on a Z axis. Yeah, it's basically flying mode. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So so, <laughs> so uh, you start out in this uh, you know stone and mortar tunnel uh, tunnel that is full of soldier corpses. So they they got as far as you know as far as here, right? Mm-hmm. Um, here you get an assault rifle. You're gonna need it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and like you are in this castle keep, like you are within the walls, um, fighting between these small buildings. Uh, and as you go around, uh, you got these bone monks that are coming around raining hell down on you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and things keep getting, uh, unleashed yep. <laughs> in this level, like going into one of these outbuildings and opening something up will spawn more enemies in the main kind of castle zone yeah here um your main goal here is to go into the well well of course it tells you don't go down the well yeah but you have to go down the well yeah and there is a optional boss like i've never fought the chomper oh Uh, i fought the chomper yeah yeah did you fight the chomper and the chomper one yeah yeah, well no i fought the chomper and i I won um but but then he also releases the son of chomper chompers yeah many Um, many chompers start showing up yes yeah which i did fight Oh, yeah. But the actual chopper, I just swam past. Yeah. Water levels make me nervous. <laughs> well, that's why I engaged with it. I, I leaned into the pain. Um, yeah. But yeah, like you're, you're down here and to, you know, to get out, you have to press the switch um, and you know, the water level rises up, flooding the city and letting the chopper, you know, and, and 
Chomper's sons get out, get out at you, um, mm-hmm. and, and 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 follow. Uh, you've got to rise all the way up to the top of this cathedral here. Uh, the chomper is like it's like a big spherical fish. Like it's yes. kind of ludicrous. Yeah, it's kind of ludifisk. <laughs> um, the <laughs> dumb. No, it's smart. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so after you kind of swim through the ruins to get past the chomper and stuff, you get into the next level. Yeah, I uh, hear the crypt of the flesh, mm. uh, which is our final no flashlight zone yeah um it introduces you know in a, in, a, in a game without the wendigo the hand sound the scariest enemy also maybe arguably uh, I, I mean the scariest enemy i mean this the, the the look of these things um you know so like how you describe them obviously the face stands out uh they seem like munches the scream to me or munches the scream yeah yeah specifically in the face but even just like their bodies their bodies kind of are kind of like um you know the mr show sketch where the the the, the kid yeah, the uh cigar the ti- yeah the titanica face first next time <laughs> face first yeah, yeah exactly first, next time <laughs> yeah. yeah no just where, where the where the Meta- titanica fan metallica fan uh dips himself in acid and his body is just like little hot dogs that's kind of what their yeah. bodies look like yeah yeah after your song try suicide i tried suicide <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gee, yeah yeah uh, and they just run at you screaming, kind of waving their arms like Kermit <laughs> when Kermit's really yeah. excited. Yeah. Uh, and it's somehow the scariest fucking thing in the world. <laughs> I honestly have no idea, like, how these things manage to be so scary. Part of it's just the sound, like them struggling to breathe through. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the rasping that really gets it. Yeah. Like, yeah, they, they don't, yeah. I mean, like, they don't do that much damage. Nope. They're just, they're just kind of there to, to, to startle you. Yeah. Uh, and to be extremely scary. <laughs> so real scary. Yeah. Um, uh, but they've, they've got like a, like a, um, it was like a breath attack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what it looks like they're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Super scary. <laughs> uh, other than that though, this is just like a, a catacomb kind of underground tunnel level. Yeah. You know, they're the main course yeah. in terms of terror yeah. and interest. <laughs> Uh, and also it's a lot of what you're, you're going to see here in uh, episode three until stuff goes really off the rails. Um, we get like the first major clue that I had that, that actually caught, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that actually caught about, about what's going on here. It's pretty on the nose though. You get into this catacombs and you see a message written in blue, um, over a notable pickup. I forget what it is, but it's like a weapon or a key it says the chaos crawls to me. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not there aren't tons of clues yeah. about that before this either. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's uh is that also the villain of Quake? I, I no, yeah. the, the 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 villain of Quake is Yog Sothoth. Yeah, Yog Sothoth. So that's yeah. obviously what this is yeah. kind of doing. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we'll we'll get to it. Yeah. So um but yeah, the, it's uh it's starting to, to kind of introduce that idea mm-hmm. um to you. Um I love the trick that this does though. Um I will always enjoy when uh built structures turn into organic ones. Yes. Give me those yeah, flesh yeah. walls. Yeah. Someday I'm getting real life. I'm going to open a door and then the walls on the other side are just going to be blood. <laughs> and that will be it for me. Yep. Nope. They're yeah. just going to take well, you away. Sure. Yeah. Time to go. Yep. Time, time for dead. <laughs> my, my, uh, my, my whole planet needs me. <laughs> yep. Come out. Because uh, it is a very scary, unnerving thing. And I, I also really always love it. Yeah. It's like a highlight. It's weird. It's like a highlight in Final Fantasy V even. Yeah. <laughs> Like it is, it's just, you know, no matter how bland a game is, it can be a cool thing that happens. Yeah. If you open a door in a made space and it's, it's Silent Hill's trick. Body. Love it. Yep. It's good. It's good shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, lots of flying enemies uh, here. Yeah. And we're introduced to uh, these new enemies, these uh, kind of skull. I mean, these, uh, it, like it, it, it kind of, I mean, calling them skulls. Uh, well, they shoot skulls at the, you. Yeah. Skull they, shooter. Yeah. So they're called bone balls. Uh, yeah. They, 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 what they look like is big floating porous amoebas that just yeah. scream and spin and shoot skulls in every direction. Same. <laughs> like just you know it just it these things are 2020 mood uh, all over i love them I um, want, they're I really scary yeah they're extremely scary yeah uh, again just scary sound design they're loud yeah you know making your weapons really loud and then also making the enemies very loud yeah loud is the key mm-hmm. folks if you're designing a game yeah. And you want it to feel good and be scary. I mean, it can't all be loud. There's contrast, you know? Yeah, but a lot of it can be loud. <laughs> you can make most of it loud. Yeah, most of it can be loud. Like, yeah. things that are big should be, you know, scary that should be loud. Scary mm-hmm. and loud. Yeah. That's good. 
quiet and scary is good as well. Uh-huh. Scary and loud. Yeah. Good. Um, there is uh, – the secret level is really well hidden. There's a bathroom. Right. And you have to flush yourself down the level. Well, okay. So it is a modern bathroom embedded in a place called the Crypt of the Flesh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. the, uh, just a human bathroom. Yeah. Um, and like the, there's a, there's a blood message written above it saying flush your sins away, uh, yeah. which is supposed to tell you stand on the toilet and flush it. Not only can you flush like the bar of soap or any physics object down, you can flush yourself. Yes. Yep. Uh, and this enters the uh, hidden level for this episode, the radicomes, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of about, uh, again, this is why it makes me think that they know that the, the rat enemies are annoying. Oh, I mean like this is the third episode. So like people probably complained enough when exactly. they released the first two, they're like, okay, <laughs> so, so you like right. donuts, huh? <laughs> exactly. Uh, which I appreciate. Yeah. Um, and you have to use the mortar. You have to use AOEs because yeah. these things are a real pain. Yeah. They're everywhere. Yeah. Um, um and, and I love that the boss is just a scaled up rat. <laughs> yep. Uh, known as the many as one. Uh-huh. So it's just the, the torment rat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's literally just the, the rat. It's, it's or the, uh, yeah. Yeah. And it just charges um, at you furiously. Like it's bigger, but it's behavior is not any different. Yeah. Um, really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, really cute. This, I think is the level. One of the levels is explicitly designed after a dungeon in torment. Um, mm. I think this is the one that's possible. It's kind yeah. of hard to tell because it's, you know, 3d you know, space versus person. 2d space yeah. and stuff. But, I could, I could see it. I could see it. Being yeah. 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 Um, yeah, pretty cool. Um, and you exit by flushing yourself down another toilet. Of course. Of course. Uh, to get to uh, Blasphemy. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, so you start <laughs> – things are very quickly not holding. Uh, yeah. Very, very quickly beginning to not hold. You start in this, like, large floating island under a red sky. I don't know. There shouldn't be sky down here. It's it is they're doing and it sounds arbitrary and it's not. No, they're doing, no. There's this is the beginning of them starting to remix space. No, yeah. in a way that is trying to emulate the genre. Yeah, like trying to add a little cosmic horror to the more visceral horror mm-hmm. of this and make you feel an uncanny sense of like I'm not in the right spot. No, no. So, so, so. something is manipulating me. Things are not working. It is not just Astro Labs. In fact, things yes. have not been normal since then. Exactly. <laughs> like something happened when I went in there yeah. and exposure to this corrupting force and stuff yeah. has done it. Mm-hmm. Um, so this uh, ends, there's a, you know, a big church in the middle and there are four buttons that are next to some weapons mm-hmm. that spawn, um, you know, a, 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 a different type of enemy mm-hmm. basically. Um, and if you, uh, you have to take out those enemies and then hit the next button. Yeah. And that opens the church. Yep. Opens up this gigantic cathedral. You know, again, they just smack dab in the center of this featureless floating continent kind of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. You go inside and you press a button that spawns this unholy altar. Um, and you get like in-game dialogue saying, shoot it, shoot it. Like it's your, you know, it's your character saying, hey, this cannot be. This cannot yeah. exist. Um, kill it. Yep. <laughs> uh, and when you kill it, you get a message that says like the smell of rotting meat. Uh, walks in, yeah, uh, and a gigantic meat tomato, or like <laughs> yeah, not Sorry. meat tomato, meat tornado, yeah, uh, starts coming through, like yeah. this, the like, huge bloody, it's it, like I'm, scary tornado, yeah. And so it, <laughs> it it is a tor- it is a blood tornado the size of a uh, of a painkiller enemy, yes, uh, that comes yeah. barreling across the stage, and you have to get out of the way. Yes, it took me a uh, kind of an embarrassing amount of time to figure out what to do. Yeah, yeah. About this, um, I didn't realize it didn't take up the whole island. I didn't realize like, it didn't a, follow me. Yeah, exactly. Well, without a point of reference, mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, you know, um, exactly. So you you just have to get out of the way and watch it level the church. Yeah. Um, interesting speed running trick of this uh, because the church can be destructed. Um, it can actually be destroyed with the bar of soap. So you can throw the bar of soap at the back of the church to bust through the wall and then climb. And if it lands the right way, it'll bust open the hole in the wall as well. Or the oh, hole in the floor. So good. And you just skip the whole thing <laughs> and just go down there, which is pretty fun. Yeah. Um, but just the visuals of this gigantic tornado. Incredibly cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and this beautiful uh, stained glass staircase. Mm, oh, so good. That you're going down. Like, it's just incredibly cool. Like, you get a backpack full of ammo, which refills all your ammo. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of a new item. And you can either slowly make your way down this staircase or you can jump down it and have another yeah, there's you no know, fall 2001. Yeah. There's no fall damage. Of course, there's like be crazy. <laughs> there's fall damage in this game. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and it just, uh, it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. It just looks so cool. Yeah. Uh, It's falling down this thing. There's just a whole nother level down there. Like mm-hmm. it's like a mini level where you've got to, you know, get some keys and stuff, huge variety of it, variety of enemies. Like, th- like there are no stops left. They have pulled yeah. them all out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we get down there, uh, you go through this blue corridor and we enter a kind of a, a stop gap level here. Yeah. Um, is making our way into the final phase of the game. Right. Um, this is the brimstone ghetto, which is kind of a corrupted decaying city block. Yeah. Um, and not just like, oh, the buildings are rotten or whatever, like biomes are starting to mix. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's going to be a big thing coming soon, Mm -hmm. but here, there's not a whole lot to say about this level. Like you kind of go in and out of buildings, in and out of the underground tunnels. Mm -hmm. Uh, We run into a lot of those horrors, those like screaming scream guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that kind of comes through as we kind of like segue through, like we get to the rural, rural biome. You know, we're like, yes. like in the forest, we see, you know, scarecrows and stuff. We're fighting um, the, the fork mains again. Like some graffiti says, welcome back. Very honestly. Yeah. Which the, they took a break from the fork maidens. They yeah. weren't at all in episode two or barely in episode one, uh, yeah. three. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this introduces us to uh, homecoming. Yeah. Mission seven. Yeah. Where the malevolent force says, hey, why don't we send you back to the past? <laughs> Well, yep. Why don't we take you back to your childhood? Yep. Uh, where you are in this spacey, scary version of like this, like floating islands in this green haze. It's like with an, barns and trees. It's like a non twisted uh, version of the milkman conspiracy or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bunch of floating islands with like farmhouses and stuff. And the voice laughs saying like, Hey, welcome home. Here you are. Um, yep. and one of the ways that it, you know, space breaks, you know, at least th- this happened for me when you walk over one of these plank bridges that connects the islands, you, you know, if you breaks and you fall, you don't die though. Instead you just fall and then you respawn back to the top of the map and then yeah. you can just steer your fall to land on terra firma again. Yeah, so you, you loop, loop around. It's a, it's like a, it's like asteroids. Yes. Um, which is the big gimmick of this, this level. Yeah. So you're interacting with these familiar spaces. You know, you've seen kind of familiar, familiar biomes, at least, mm-hmm. Yeah. you know, now familiar spaces are coming soon <laughs> um, as you kind of make your way uh, through this until you get into uh, the house. And the way they do the enemies in this, I really like too. Mm-hmm. I love going around a corner in a house and finding the skull amoeba thing. Yep. Like just, it shouldn't <laughs> be inside. Screen, nope. You know, they built a house around it. Yeah. This, <laughs> the, just like the one that's in the barn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I love that. Like, that's so scary mm-hmm. to me. Um, but just finding these, like, weird floating, just, like, video game object. Yeah. You can click on, like, a save point in a minor JRPG or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you click on it, and it rotates gravity 90 degrees. Yeah, and all of a sudden, you're falling across the world. <laughs> yeah, like, you, can, and you, you can't die from this, but you have to jump from island to island, like... On the sides to, of trees. Uh, like Titanfall 2. Yeah. Like the, uh, you know, the level, the the factory level. Yeah. You're kind of playing of Plinko with the trees that you're yeah. falling across, you know, jumping, just trying not to cycle back around. Like, if you fall, you just, you know, you're, you're, you're going to cycle back. But, you know, there's a very specific thing that you need to do with the world twisted 90 degrees. And you're going to be twisting the gravity 90 degrees another couple of times. And you're going to yes. be doing this, like, inside of a house. Yes. To, like, and it's really cool. Like, you know, some Inception shit, like yeah. walking around the ceiling, trying to get to one specific island. Mm-hmm. They're trying to get and it's really sad. It's like very fun to fall past an island you need to land on. Um, yeah. You know, an accident it just looks really neat. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, eventually, you know, you get to this house. Uh, you're trying to get into this like garage mm-hmm. ultimately. Um, and this is implied to be, you know, your house. Yeah. You know, you're like, how could how can I how could I be here? Yeah. Painful memories. Painful memories. Uh. Um. I, and I didn't you... get this message in the cellar. I didn't did not get that. Yeah, I tried going down there. I was like, okay, I'll open this up. And it says, can't go down there. Too many frogs. Yeah. So know. some goofs. I, I do yeah. not know what that is referencing. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Basement's frogged. <laughs> like... Yeah. Free base, basement is frogged. Yeah. Oh, um, but there's a passageway. They have to go down that leads you into a lab. Um, and this is like the back half of the level, but again, you've yeah. just segued from farmhouse into basically another retelling of the Escher lab, uh, well, where it, you are. The implication I think is it's the same lab. Yeah. 
like we're going to end up in some specific level parts of the lab. Like this mm-hmm. is at least connected to the actual lab. Yeah. This is when you, the actual levels you've been in start getting remixed and broken. Yeah. Kind of annoys like the old hunters mm-hmm. almost. Yeah. Old hunters is a, is a good comparison. I, I guess when I like, I, I was raising it as like, Hey, this doesn't make any sense in like an arch and leading way that like, Hey, isn't it cool? How are they doing oh, this? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I was just pointing out that I think this is actually the Asher labs. Oh yeah. Like it's not a, uh, another lab. I think right. we are now starting to, have our brains yeah. broken yeah but now that gravity is working differently like escher labs can actually act like an like an, an, an escher thing yes <laughs> yeah. you can swap gravity to to move around in different ways uh, yeah. they do uh you know in in just terms of scary things that never fire uh-huh. um there are tons of windigos and glass like resident evil tanks yep and it never happens <laughs> yeah. uh but the entire time it was on screen yeah like i thought it would mm-hmm. yeah um after you kind of make your way to the exit of this you know mostly fighting lots of scientists and again some of those bone balls um we get to mission eight as above so below yeah um and you start out uh you're outside the iron, iron cathedral at the beginning of the episode yep <laughs> yep um and he laughs at you because he knows uh-huh. this is silly you have all your weapons and stuff yeah and when you go in it's different it's not the same iron cathedral it, there's all these pits you know and the it's broken open and you can just kind of fall mm-hmm. for a while yeah um and kind of move through the different biomes that we've done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, you know, it's very hard to describe what goes on here. You know, like the play is still, you know, you're still you know, going in and out corridors. Uh, you know, like there are houses where enemies can shoot at you from outside. Uh, mm-hmm. You can get out there like, yeah. Uh, and you reach like this, you know, dark hallway that says, trust your eyes, but you can't turn on your flashlight here. Yeah. Um, you get out to this strange room, like you just pass through a hallway. All of a sudden, you're very small, and so are the enemies, and the world <laughs> geometry is gigantic, and just the power that is drawing you in is fucking with you. It just is so small, so powerless as you're fighting yeah. as you're, you're fighting little enemies in a gigantic world. There's um there's a secret, there's a wall over there that you can open up, and there's a little tiny version of the uh chainsaw guy. Yep. <laughs> and I can't remember his name. <laughs> little neck. Yeah, little, little neck. Yeah. Uh, and he doesn't have any, like, really additional powers. He's just smaller. Yeah. And it has a health bar. Yeah. Um, you, you kill him. It just has so cute. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, and just, like, and, like, when you get back to, like, regular size, you eventually start running into tiny model versions of levels that you've seen before. Yeah. 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 Just really, like, really inventive shit. You play with scale. Like, yeah. Do it. Play with scale, especially if you're doing Cosmic Horror. Uh-huh. You know? Um, you get to the, uh, you go to that blade spinning hallway again that we saw at the, in episode one Yeah. at the end, there's a teleporter this time and it teleports you to the back of this mission. So back to the beginning of the iron cathedral, <laughs> the voice laughs, like you just had to start over, but now we have the yellow key. Right. Uh, so we can go down and use that yellow key and it brings us back to the cellar where the game started. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the meat hooks we were hung on yeah. and behind us where we were, it says complete the circle. Yeah. So you have to use the meat hooks to end the level. Yeah. Great. Mm. super good yeah. um next level is not as like this is so this to me feels like the main game's um nod towards there's an endless mode of this oh yeah as well as in the menu we didn't talk about we talked didn't talk about multiplayer really but we talked mentioned it there's also an endless mode mm. which is what this kind of feels like a little bit to me a little bit yeah yeah um you're starting there's a there's a cool secret mm-hmm. yeah um, you, you you sent me this i didn't end up using it but i like i like that this yeah. is here if you want, so you start off in this kind of psychedelic treescape with these like beautiful, you know, uh, lightning trees almost. Mm-hmm. Um, if you just turn around and leave, you can jump from platform to platform. It says the coward's way out and you can just end the level, <laughs> yeah. um, which if you're hunting achievements, this is a good way to get the pacifist and the speed run mm-hmm. achievements. Um, but if you go forward, we're sent into this like gigantic treescape full of ammo and pickups and jump pads. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we fall, we just we loop. Mm-hmm. So falling isn't a problem. And they release just wave after wave of like enemy mix ups. Yes. At us. Every They're, enemy gets gets an airing here. Yeah. Um, and it's weird because like it, it starts out kind of where you're at right now. And then it like cycles back, cycles back to the beginning and then back. It's done in the same order every time. And there are particular waves that are like breathers. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah. you know, uh, like the, the and just 12 minutes of sustained combat. Uh, yeah. like there's no real break, like toward the end of a, toward the end of a wave, like, you know, things will dwindle down as you have like one or two and, things left to kill before the next one starts up. But, and some power ups will replenish. Yes. But it's not like you get full ammo every time. 
Yeah. yeah like it happens a couple of times during the, uh, the waves yeah. and some of the, the mixups are pretty clever. Yeah. Like this is the, uh, if you don't go to the radicomes, this is the first time you're going to see like, what if you fought 40 rats, Yep. <laughs> you know, and just jumping on the, uh, the, the jump pad, mm-hmm. shooting mortars down on them is fun. Yeah. Um, a way to buy yourself some time is to jump off the edge of the level and yes. cycle back through and like land in a more advantageous place. Yep. Yeah. Um, and while that's happening, enemies might hit each other. Mm-hmm. Which starts uh, which a them. gigantic yeah. cascade of them dealing with each other. That's the, yeah. that, like, that is the only way that I finish this. Yeah. You it's know, hard. I, I knew that there was, you know, you told, you told me about the way out, um, you know, how to skip it, but I was like, no, I'm actually, I'm going to like, I'm going to take an hour and figure this out because this feels possible. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, it just, you know, like it, it's, it's just a, an occasion you have to rise to. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. To me, this is the biggest challenge of the game. This yeah. is harder than the um, bosses. Yeah. Um, and it is, uh, it's really there for you. Like, this is the pure combat. Yeah. You know, experience of this. Like, hey, how do you fight these enemies? What weapons do you use? Mm-hmm. How do you deal with these mix-ups? Yeah. Like, like, and, and just, you know, like, noticing, segueing from one to the other in a wide open space, like, feeling, saying, like, oh, like, I need to, like, I, I didn't realize this. This just, this just lived in my hands. I need to move differently when I'm dealing yeah. with this particular enemy. Um, yes. And watching those different movement patterns that were being demanded of me be put into um, conflict with each other. I mm-hmm. uh, was very good. Just were like, no, like <laughs> avoiding one enemy puts me like makes me vulnerable to this other one that they can only mash up with this. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Pretty neat. Yeah. Um, after you beat it, um, we get or there's a boss to this as well. Yeah. There's the the watchers of the gate, which is the guardian uh, who we fought at the end of episode two. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, two and of then, the blood horses or whatever. Yep. Two of the blood horses. Um and yeah, that's really tricky as well. It's but, a lot. <laughs> I'll yeah. admit, I did a quick save at the beginning of the when they when they appeared. And I was mm-hmm. like, I'm not going through all those waves again, dudes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um. Yeah. And this introduces us to uh, the final mission of the game, uh, Mission Ten: Dusk. Mm-hmm. Um. We start off with a little breather. You know, again, this game is not afraid of quiet time. Right. Um. You uh, are in this little wooded area without enemies, where you get some power ups, but mostly you're picking up these crystals of madness. Yeah. And dropping them into color coded jars. Right. You know, buckets. Yeah. Um. And that's really just a way to activate the portal to go through into the boss arena, where we meet the cult leader. Mm-hmm. We meet Lucas. Yeah. Yep. Um. And Lucas, I think this is an interesting boss. He taunts you a little bit. Uh huh. And then you fight the protagonist of a two point five D shooter. Yep. You fight you. He bunny hops. Yep. He switches. He switches weapons instantaneously. Yep. This is really hard, Gary. How would you? Uh, yeah. Exactly. It's it's what uh what a nightmare the protagonist of one of these games would be <laughs> as as a boss. Yeah. Like, I think this is hard. I don't think it's as hard as the gauntlet in the last level. No, no. You just, you run, like you run and you leave lots of traps, like lots of mortar shells and just get your timing. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And Um, I just say, you know, I I found myself running out of ammo. Like it was like, no, you like, you like you, you come in fully loaded out, you pick up a backpack, like you've got to figure out how to make every shot count. It's weirdly like a dog fight almost. Yeah, like you yeah, end up making you, like passes. Yeah, you have to like find yourself like kind of like in his lane. You have to like match speed with him almost, and like match your uh, your jumping rhythm with his. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I I like this quite a bit. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's it's just it's just clever mm-hmm. as well. You know, like Doom. You never really had Doom guy versus Doom guy, right? But when you actually look at Doom guy's powers, it's like more than the powers than the Avengers have. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> yeah. fucking incredible. Yeah, you know, um, after you get his health down enough. Um, you get a message that he is not the cultists are going unworthy, unworthy. Mm-hmm. All these cultists come in and kill him for you. Yeah. And he's screaming, no, no, I, I recruited you. How can you turn on me? Yep. Yeah. Um, and this, this voice that's kind of been tempting you the whole time. You start going up these uh, stairs mm-hmm. towards this angelic light. Uh, and the voice starts talking to you. Yeah. Um, you know, he says like, Hey, you know what? He actually was worthy. Yeah. But I think I like you better. And then you drop. What are you expecting? <laughs> God, Satan. You know, no, of course it's not. It always, you know, of course you had to know it was me. Uh huh. And then it's Nyarlathotep. <laughs> yep. You just, uh, as you are, as you are approaching the big heavenly door at the top of the staircase, you drop and you fall into a gigantic under- underground cavern where I don't know if you heard Gary when he said that Nyarlathotep. Nyarlathotep. Hey, buddy. So just making this a monster in my podcast crossover on accident. <laughs> 
Um, I did not know that going into this game. Yeah. You know, at all. Um, but yeah. Uh, and, you know, is this a meaningful addition to the Nyarlathotep canon? No. Nah. Probably not. But it's just a little <laughs> bit of fan service. And if you have to have a big evil eldritch god mm -hmm. that a cult is worshiping yeah that can fuck with space and do all this stuff might sure. as well yep make your story lovecraftian mm -hmm. throw it in there yeah yeah you know? it's not a great yep. fight if i'm being honest <laughs> it's real boss fighty yeah like it's real like it's not zen mm -hmm. it's real boss fighty though yeah so his attacks um it's it's a little bit hard to tell what he's going to do yeah very much yeah like, I, I think it's really hard to avoid attacks in this, which is not something that's true of most of the game. Right. So there are two platforms uh, with, um, you know, the springboards on them, uh, you know, left and right. And he has two major attacks. So they do like a vertical attack, which will hit one of the platforms or the other or a um, um, horizontal attack, like a sweep. And you need to use the spring pad to get over to get over those. Yeah. Uh, for me, this battle was just entirely about rushing through um and doing enough damage to him because i just i was not able to avoid attacks intentionally really yeah yeah you can drop down the lava temporarily yeah and there take are... less damage than his hits and then get back up yeah and then there are power-ups down there too yeah so it's, it's kind of a secret yeah um to do so the um the gimmick to him is he can't take damage normally he has behind him in the kind of void there are cracks in the void yeah and if you shoot them sunlight comes through and then he is damageable for a time mm -hmm. which is just so you yeah. boss fight <laughs> yeah like that's so so video gamey yeah you know in a way that's like mildly disappointing it doesn't matter like it's mm -hmm. you know one little tiny like touch that is suboptimal is not ruining this for me at all mm -hmm. um it is suboptimal yeah so uh that thing when you kill him though i like that you can't actually kill him no but, like, the other thing too is like the cracks also are kind of hidden behind him mm -hmm. you have to start jumping it uh, using the pads to find the cracks to shoot yes yeah um okay. i love that he gets down to one health and says okay cool yeah well, this he takes all... his ball and goes home. Yeah, <laughs> like I mean, it, like it, it is very Lovecraftian. There was no way to win. Like yeah, you were, you were always beat. fucked. <laughs> yeah, like you were not going to beat Nyarl off the top. No, he stops yeah. everything and says, "All right, uh, I don't care what you want. You have proven yourself worthy. You can have my power, and you will remain here as the guardian of dusk until I need you again. For one shall always reign beneath dusk." Yeah. And he says something like, you know, you know, you can feel my power horrible, isn't it? Like, mm -hmm. you know, you get that sense of like, yeah, this probably really sucks. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, you get the, uh, the you get a view of your character. Mm hmm. Um, big dude. Sickles in your hands. Yeah. Big beard. <laughs> and uh, after the credits, Nyarlathotep the Depp says, uh, pray you never meet me in my thousand other forms, which is both uh, just straight up like random. Yeah. Not, but also a plug for sequels because mm -hmm. uh, they, they have said also in interviews they're like yeah as long as we have ideas like you know we, we do episode four or five six no you know whatever like if we still have ideas we'll keep doing this because it's cool yeah i agree uh, it's and cool I feel I'm in, in favor yeah do it more it's good or <laughs> yeah i i love this yeah. um one of my favorite games from last year mm -hmm. uh pretty easily you know if not a fave um is just uh really really fun and satisfying you do the whole thing in 10 hours mm -hmm. get this like awesome little blast of action and atmosphere and spooks yeah cool concepts and fun levels yeah in a real nice like bite-sized chunk yeah you know i don't know i don't have an awful lot like new to say in the sum up here but i'll just go back to when i said you know talking in the generality is like everything about this demonstrates just a real understanding of what makes yes. this kind of game fun and it is really great again to trust the, the developer <laughs> kind of implicitly yeah. like just i feel taken care of when i'm in this and that is always you know that 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 trust is always a little bit stoked. It's a it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit uh you know the 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 bellows are blown on it um mm -hmm. by every little like gameplay joke that is put in by a unique level concept that happens and they always keep happening up until the very end. You know and not just playing with my own particular you know horror hobby horses you know like the, the particular ideas or concepts that i'm a mark for but just you know having incredibly good play and expressing all of these ideas through that 
Um, mm. Yeah, it's it's. I I think that this is a game that people have to play. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Like it's just it's it's the caveats are so few and far between. Like yeah. if you just don't like, I I hate playing shooters. Mm-hmm. I do not want to play a fast based shooter. But the thing that this does that I think is different than so we we've gone through a couple different revivals. Yeah. Of this right like people realized like hey the reason why doom was a worldwide phenomenon was because it was really good yeah like this was not just you know a pet rock yeah like doom is a great video game Mm -hmm. um and then we you know we had the uh the things that came after there were also you know blood is really good yeah 3d really good then we had um our kind of like the first wave of people who realized those were good yeah your serious sams your painkillers yeah and neither of those games have good levels right like serious sam is kind of fun painkiller is kind of fun painkiller is almost all arena combat yeah in like churches and stuff and i think that this new wave um you know like a medieval this game even like ion fury which i'm not going to play because it's made by transphobes right but like those games are like hey actually one of the things that was special about these games was not just the fact that it was fast right you know it was the fact that these levels Mm -hmm. were really really fun to explore yeah like realizing that the first level of Duke Nukem 3D, when you are blasting a hole with a rocket launcher through the screen at the movie theater <laughs> to find secrets behind it is a pure unit of video game. Yeah. Like finding those secrets is is one of the building blocks in which video games are made and mm-hmm. marrying those two things like that absolutely fast kinesthetic action of like Doom 2016 mm-hmm. or other revivals of this type of play with that level design. Yeah. That kind of intricacy of level design is just like it's the sweet spot. Mm hmm. You know, yeah, it feels it, good. It, it is, you know, it is an ideal marriage of a lot of things that I look for in games. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I, you know, like I just we we, we kind of glossed over a lot of the story details because a lot of it feels um, laid out. But like, there's a really good little horror story told here, like yeah. from front to back. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yep. it just uh, yeah. there, there's 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 just a lot to chew on. You know, you know yep. a lot of different flavors, a lot of different parts on this beast that you can just get your get, get your teeth around and start gnawing on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love it. You know, if you have any affection for this genre, I think you owe it to yourself to try it. Yeah. Um, and I will watch games this guy makes for the rest of his career. Yep. You know, I'm not like he might lose me at some point, but mm-hmm. like that just that kind of understanding. Yeah. You know, that he's exhibiting of like the base level intuitive part of these these genres is just feels really good. Yeah. So, um, thanks for joining us for the first new watch out for fireballs of 2020. Mm-hmm. Starting out with a, with a nice big, uh, dose of positivity. Oh, this, yeah, this month. Yeah. So yeah. And this, uh, this quarter is all like pretty good stuff. Yeah. Like it's, it's exciting shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, there, there, there's no, there, there's no stinker this month. I don't think there's a stinker next month. So. No. Yeah. We got, we got no stinkers. We got some stuff that is like, you know, we are interesting unknowns, mm-hmm. you know, that we're at least interested in. And yeah. we have some stuff that is like, this is good. It's me like the it's worst crime is it's not my <laughs> it's, it's favorite not, genre. Right. Like it's a great example of a genre I don't love. Yeah. You know, nothing wrong with that. So it's mm-hmm. it's a it's a good first like third of the year, actually. Yeah. Um, so if you want to suggest or uh patronize, you know, support a game, produce a game, mm-hmm. uh, you can do so at our Patreon. If you go to patreon.com slash duck feed TV, yep. Um, you'll see you know, we have a lot of patron picks this first uh quarter. Yeah. And uh excited about them because they're really good picks. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you can do that. Uh, if you have thoughts about uh, any of our games for January, so, um, you know, ideas about hidden gems that you want to say, um, thoughts about Dusk, thoughts about the Cat Lady, which we're talking about next mm-hmm. week, which I'm very excited about, um, mm-hmm. or about our premium game for this month, um, Shadowrun Dragonfall. Uh, yes. The deadline for that is um, January the 15th. Uh, so go to Patreon or go to uh, duckfeed.tv slash contact and write in with those. If you have thoughts about multiple games, please separate them into multiple responses. I know it's more work for you to do that, but it makes things easier for us to, you know, include. Um, yeah. 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 Um, mark your calendars. We're going to be at the Midwest Gaming Classic. Yes. This year. Uh, we're tabling. We're going to be doing a meetup. We are not currently doing a panel. We are mm-hmm. instead teaming up with Retronauts. Yes. To do a panel uh, there talking yeah. about uh, celebrity appearances in games. Yeah. Looking forward to that. With those fellas. That's going to be really fun. Yeah. So uh, Bob always does a great job of doing a video mm-hmm. portion of that. So if you're able to come, definitely come see it. The audio is also fun. Mm-hmm. But we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Yeah. Uh, teaming up with those guys. Yeah. Um, ratings, reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys have come out in force 
with yeah. that because we got some bad actors being jerks. <laughs> right. uh, appreciate you balancing the scales. Yeah. Um, and also uh, our YouTube channel. It's oh, it's, oh, it's, yeah. po- it's popping off recently. You can go to uh, mm-hmm. youtube.com slash TuckVTV, not just uh, mm-hmm. archives of my streams and original videos I'm doing for Hex Rank, but also Gary has a uh, playthrough of Darkest Dungeon going yes. on. Yes. Yeah. I have started, uh, you know, the game that uh, I... I can't justify doing for the show unless you just happen to fall into it <laughs> because it doesn't fit into, you know, it would take more than 20 hours of prep. Right. I just need you to, <laughs> you know, uh, Stardew Valley it. Yep. It just has to become a Stardew Valley for you. And then mm-hmm. we can do it for the show until then though, I'm going to push it on all channels. Cause it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny. Cause it's like last year, you know, Resident Evil two divinity, original sin two. Like there's so many games I really loved. Uh huh. The one that I am still playing, like Slay the Spire, if I can love Slay the Spire, mm-hmm. the game I am still playing is is Darkest Dungeon. I play it every day. Darkest Dungeon with the, with the most recent expansion. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I, that is having such a long tail. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I've always liked that game. I had, like, 40 hours in it over multiple attempts before this. Mm-hmm. And now I am, like, well pushing the, you know, 150, 200 hour point with it. Fuck. It's becoming one of those. For fuck's sake, man. Yeah. I'll play Darkest Dungeon while watching The Witch and The Lighthouse at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, while nutting and while nutting in space backwards space. thank you thank yeah. you tying it all together so I need, yeah uh, ash on ice cream do it, Make it. <laughs> um anywho uh we'll see you next week with cat lady yep <clears throat> uh until next time what should they watch out for watch out for ice loads in space <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> watch watch out for interplanetary paternity suits <laughs> <laughs>